just give us a little way when you do. Because he left already. Okay. Yeah. Um, second item, approval of agenda. Is there anything that anybody wants to add to tonight's agenda? Okay, I don't see any hands, so can I get a mover for the agenda? So move. Moved by Councillor Coleman, seconded by Mayor Bailey. Uh, all in favor? And none opposed, thank you. Uh, declaration of pecuniary interest, I'm gonna ask if you have any uh, to do so, uh, declare so at the appropriate time. Um, tonight we have no delegations, petitions or presentations outside of uh, our regular presenters. I'll bring us to item five, adoption of the minutes from the previous meetings. Um, can I get a mover to get that on the floor to adopt the previous minutes? Moved by Councillor Pierce, second by Councillor Ferrier. Um, is there any corrections, omissions, anything? Anybody see anything? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the vote to see. All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none. Uh, is there any business arising from the minutes? Good. Seeing that, we'll go on to uh, item seven. And uh, just for those that are listening or in attendance, um, we only have one application under item seven. That's public hearings under the Planning Act to receive information from the public. So we're going to hear application ZBA 44 slash 20 slash DN. Um, and that's funny homes regarding Rust Acres Road, Tom Brown Drive, and Lady Elaine. And we're looking at blocks 97, 98, 99. And like I say, for anybody listening, this uh, we're, we're just receiving information tonight. We are not uh, making any decisions on this other than to receive it. Um, so, but if, if anybody has anything to say, we would certainly welcome it so that staff can consider all, uh, all opinions and concerns on the matter. So uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, ask uh, the applicant from Lasani, if they want to, pre oh, well, I'll ask her first. Um, who is our planner on this one? Is this, uh, this is Dan. So Dan, uh, do you want to go and is there anything you want to discuss on this or present first? Sure, I wasn't sure if Matt had a, uh, a script or anything that he needed to introduce. That's what he typically does, I'm not sure. If not, I, I I think you're okay to go there, Dan. Go ahead. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. My, uh, what I share is a copy of what has been included in the agenda package. So when that pops up, just confirm that you can see that for me. You're good, Dan. Excellent. You can still see that? I just shifted it onto my other screen. Perfect. Okay, so uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we have received a, an application for a zoning bylaw amendment for the property located at uh, Rest Acres Road, Tom Brown Drive, and Lydia Lane, otherwise known as Blocks 97, 98, and 99, and registered plan 2M1956. Uh, the agent is MHBC Planning. Uh, care of Dave Aston and the applicant is Lasani Holmes. So, Ms. Councillor uh, Miller, Mr. Chair, I uh, identified this item as being uh, presented for information purposes, and SAS recommendation this evening is that the item be received for information purposes only. So, the, the subject lands are located. I think uh, we're familiar with with their location um, in the the northeast corner of Breast Acres Road and Powerline Road. Uh, this uh, subject lands consist of an, a couple blocks identified as 97, 98, and 99, shown on the plan uh, outlined in red. Uh, this, uh, these blocks are part of a, a Mile Hill uh, subdivision uh, that was originally the process for this uh, subdivision. Uh, with these blocks originally began in 2009 under site or uh, plan of subdivision ap application PS309. Uh, Sorry, the, Mr. Chair, point of order. The slides aren't rolling forward for those that are watching. Dan, can you move those slides or no? Yeah, I'm just, just to test it out, I'm scrolling through. No, it's still on the first one. 
Yeah, yeah it's frozen. Yeah. It might have frozen when you changed it to the other screen. So you may want to unshare and reshare. Let's try there we that. go. There we go. Is it, is it moving? OK. So I'll yeah. leave it on that screen then. So if I'm not looking directly at you, it's because I'm looking at my second screen. Uh, so, but you probably can't see my face anyways. Uh, so these, uh, these blocks have changed um, in minor ways uh, based on block number, size, shape, uh, based on the location of services uh, and road, road network. As, as the plan of subdivision has been developed. Um, I will also add that uh, Lasani picked up these, uh, these parcels of land in, into their ownership uh, in, in 2018 approximately. Perhaps the applicants would be able to expand on a little bit more history there. Uh, so uh, this process has, was started by a previous owner and uh, Lasani is the current owner of these blocks. So in our official plan, the uh, majority of the, the blocks, 97, 90, and 99, are designated as a mixed-use land use, uh, identified in the light blue there. And uh, the yellow is urban residential. So you can see a portion of block 97 uh, and 98 do have that urban residential designation. So the mixed-use land use is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it's intended to be a, a mixed use of commercial and residential land uses of various densities. And that applies to the urban residential uh, designation as well, where we're looking for uh, a mix of, uh, of residential densities in that urban residential designation uh, where appropriate. So the current zoning uh, on these parcels, again, identifying the blocks in red, 97, 98, 99. Um, currently the RM2-29 zone is a residential multiple medium density, which currently permits uh, a range of housing, uh, fourplex, row house, stacked townhouse, street fronting townhouses. Uh, also note that this is a site specific zoning that includes provisions related to, uh, to lot coverage, uh, specific building setbacks, landscaping and parking requirements. The uh, RM2. Oh, no, no problem. Um, what's, what's happening when you try and jump so the RM2 zoning applies to uh, to block 97 and 98, and a portion of block 99. Uh, the commercial uh, mixed-use commercial zoning, the C5-1, identifies a uh, number of permitted uses typical to uh, a neighborhood commercial use, um, smaller scale, um, to serve kind of the immediate surrounding area. And again, this is a site-specific zoning that uh, includes specific provisions uh, related to uh, lot frontage. Um, permitting a maximum building height of tw uh, 12 meters and parking. And then uh, there's also the temporary zoning um, on a portion of block yeah, 98, which uh, permits uh, the sales trailer that is currently in place um, ex expiring uh, June 2022. So this current zoning uh, was established um, as part of the rezoning applications of the A3-19 that's that's how we got to the current zoning on these blocks today so the proposal uh it's quite simple uh on block 97 they're um, proposing to add um, additional permitted use in the form of back-to-back -to -back townhomes on block 98 they're proposing to add back-to-back uh, -to -back townhomes and a low-rise apartment up to four stories uh, as a permitted use and as well block 99 back-to-back uh, -back townhomes and low-rise apartments as permitted uses so these permitted uses this this would be in addition to those uses that are already uh, already permitted on the property so in terms of next steps uh, we continue to receive comments from various commenting agencies including members of the public I should note that we did receive a number of um, email correspondence from residents in the area with uh, a number of, of concerns related to the proposed uh, uses. Um, we will work with the applicants to review these comments received in detail, uh, as well as the information received from the meeting this, this evening, where uh, once, once appropriate, when the timing is appropriate, we will look to 
we will look to formulate a formal recommendation from staff and uh, bring a separate public meeting in the future uh, with that recommendation where any members of the public who did speak uh, uh, this evening or provided notice uh, will be um, will be uh, provided separate notice, uh, whether they're within that 120 meter radius or not. Uh, so they will receive adequate notice um, uh, for any future meeting. Um, at this point, again, staff are just recommending that this item be received for information purposes only. And I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions. Okay, um, thanks, Dan. Can you stop sharing your screen? <laughs> Okay, perfect. Um, okay, we will hear from the applicant, but before we do, and, and we'll have chances later, but are there any questions for Dan from the committee at this time? Okay, we'll go with uh, Councillor Ferrier and then Councillor Howell. Okay, Mark, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to Dan. Um, I, I know a lot of the times when we're discussing things with our official plan, when we're looking at um, planning and planning changes over the last uh, two years, at least that I've been on council, the term complete communities has come up again and again and again and again. Um, can you, first of all, explain for those watching what the concept of a complete community is? And two, um, can we make sure that in the report that's going to come to staff after tonight, or come from staff after tonight, that that dynamic of, of how this would and wouldn't affect the idea of a complete community um, how that would be impacted by this proposal from the developer. Yeah. Dan? Sorry about that. We don't we don't use Zoom every day, so I lose it. Uh, I lose it in my in my options here. So, um, good question. The uh, the idea of Complete communities um, is uh, identified in the growth plan. Um, and the idea here is that we're providing for compact, pedestrian accessible, uh, encouraging active transportation, trans um, uh, creating systems that support transit development, development forms that support uh, the ability to bring and expand transit. Uh, this is, op uh, this is op uh, providing opportunities for a range of employment, uh, and a range of mixing housing, um, a mix of housing types and a range of affordability. So those are all the things that are uh, kind of uh, under the umbrella of a complete community. If, if I can have a follow up, Mr. Chair. Yep, go ahead, Mark. Um, one of the things that's come up repeatedly around complete communities as well, though, is the idea of schools, services, not having everything in one central faraway location, which creates a drag on traffic, being able to grab a coffee, go see the vet, uh, you know, uh, have shopping uh, and possibly even medical and paramedical experiences uh, close by within walkable distance. Um, it sounds to me like the proposed uses uh, that or the sorry, the current zoning makes way for that. Um, and I have a real concern that um, and maybe you can speak to this that if we lose the ability to have the plazas and, and those sort of commercial and, and service areas, then what do we do? Uh, what are we doing to traffic, to parking, to pedestrian flow, uh, and to this idea that we don't want to have a growing community where there's only you know a central place for them to do some of those things that we need it spread out uh, over a broad community. Yeah, sorry. Uh... To you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Leferrier, I, I, uh, I'm hoping the applicants would be able to provide a little bit more detail in what their plans are with uh, balancing and maintaining some of that commercial, um, some of those commercial permitted uses. Again, we're we're looking to add uses and not necessarily take um, take any out of um, out of the the list of options that uh, would permit development on this site. But again, my la my last one then on on this line, if that's okay, and I through you, Mr. Chair. If we allow other uses, but we don't have a, a prescribed mix of what the, the mix should be, then by definition, we're taking away the potential for commercial service area, et cetera. We're adding people, we're adding density, which could be good and could be bad depending on how you look at it. 
Uh, but then we're taking away the, we're, we're potentially taking away, it sounds like, the potential to have um, these sort of complete communities that we constantly tout we want and that are the goal of uh, the growth that's been handed to us. Um, so again, if, if that can be in the report, I think that that's really important um, for how this decision will go. Okay, yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. Um, I, I know, obviously, you've seen the application so thus far in some of those details that, I, that you're asking about are lacking. Um, we'll go to Councillor Howes next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I have a couple of questions about zoning and one question about um, process for Dan. Um, my, uh, my, I guess my first question about zoning is uh, specific to a situation where a mixed commercial use is being that it, an application that is asking for back-to-back -back town ho homes or low-rise apartments um, to be added as a permitted use. What, why is it? Um, why is it not requiring a change of zoning? to um, residential multiple medium density or, or so, so I'm just curious about that. My second question, uh, again, kind of related to the idea of apartments, I was wondering if you could uh, fill us in a little bit just for context on, uh, like I, I, I uh, Accept that there is uh, certainly demand in our community for rental apartments. Um, my my question again for context is: Are there already spots in the Rest Acres area that are currently zoned that would allow for multi-story apartments? I, I'm curious about that. Um, and my last question is a process one: When we post signs and send notifications to neighbors within 120 meters of of a an area where there's an application what do we do when there when there are adjacent homes that are sold but not occupied i'm curious whether there's any mechanism that allows notification to be sent to those homeowners who are registered someplace um, but that are not necessarily in the homes and opening their letter boxes uh, thank you Okay, so three questions there, Dan. Um, hopefully you got them written down. Give them a shot. Uh, three, Mr. Chair. The, the first question about the commercial commercial zoning. So uh, I'll go back to the official plan. Uh, mixed use uh, identifies and permits and encourages uh, a mix of, of residential and commercial uses. Uh, that C5 um, commercial zoning does allow for a mix of, of residential uses uh, kind of accessory to commercial uses. So if it was commercial on, on the main floor and residential above, uh, that could be an option um, in this case. Uh, so the, your second question, and I do have a, I do have a graphic that, that I prepared um, just to identify this because it is, um, it is important to, to understand what um, apartment related uses are currently. Um, Currently, um, share it there. So if you can't see this, stop me now. Uh, but if you can, you'll see yeah, you'll yeah. see uh, a number of uh, red dots. So those uh, the the one the dots the stars identify the blocks and the, the locations of the units that we're or uh, location of the blocks that we're working with today as part of this application. Uh, the one, two, three, and four are um, parcels of land or general areas that already permit um, the apartment-related use. So again, um, the uh, number one there, you know, we have uh, permitted today. We have a maximum of 104 units with a maximum of 12 stories um, for building height. And that is uh, a zoning that's been in place for some time under the previous owners of these lands. Uh, number two, we dealt with recently with the Arlington or Granville application um, permitting a maximum 125 units with 20 meters of building height. Uh, number three there is uh, part of a uh, live communities development. They are permitted 20 meters of building height, again within that C5, uh, C5 zone. And then uh, number four to the south of power line, 
we have uh, the RM3 zone, which is our general um, high density multi-residential zoning, um, permitting a maximum building height of 20 meters. Um, and again, the, the parcels that we're dealing with are not changing the, the height request. Uh, they have identified that they are going to be maintaining the 12 meters that is currently permitted on those parcels. So um, this gives you a really good visual of, of what current zoning um, on vacant land um, permits that apartment use. And you can see it, it does come in all shapes and sizes with different uh, zone classifications, um, number site-specific provisions. And, um, and I'll leave this up just for my last, uh, my, to answer your last question about the notice. So I, uh, multiple notice signs were posted on the property um, within 120 meters of the subject land. So this would be a boundary around the subject lands of 120 meters. And those notices go to the current owners of the property. The way our, we generate our notices, we identify the buffer that we wish to send those notices and we circulate um, or generate, gener automatically generates a list of the current owners. So um, for us to be able to get notices to those future owners, uh, we'd have to work with the applicants to obtain those, uh, those contacts. Okay, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, Mr. Chair, one quick follow-up. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, just Dan, what does 20 meters translate to in stories? I've Googled it a few times and uh, it, it varies. It really depends on building design, whether there's a pitch. Um, building height is, is measured from, from ground level to uh, the top of the roof or the pitch of the roof, depending on the design. So it could be four, could be five, it really depends on the design. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go to Councillor Gatward next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you to Dan. Um, Dan, Block 98 and Block 99, do you plan to, um, they're four story high permitted um, blocks of land. How many units are the applicants proposing in each of those low rise apartments? Uh, at this time, uh, through Mr. Chair and Councillor Catward, I, we do not have any detailed design that staff have received. Uh, that would be a good question for the applicants. Okay, so I was going to ask about parking. You don't know. I'll, uh, I'll ask the applicants. Thank you. Okay, any other questions from committee at this time for Dan before we go to the applicant? Okay, I don't see any. Dan, just a quick question for uh, some of our guests tonight. Um, the, the comments that we received, the emails, um, does the applicant, they get a copy of that? Do they see that feedback? That's correct. I, uh, I did forward a number of the correspondence received from concerned residents uh, okay. to the applicants. Um, I, I think they would want to know that. So I, I know you do, Dan, but I just want to say that. Okay, um, I'm gonna, thank you, Dan. I'm gonna ask the applicant if uh, they could come forward and uh, make their presentation at this time. I believe it's Dave. Is it Dave Aston? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Hey, Dave, you know you've got no more than 10 minutes, correct? Uh, that's great. Thank you, Chair Miller. I don't uh, think I'll need any more than that. I'll just uh, see if I can share my screen here for a presentation, but I'm not sure what happens with Brant County on me, but my screen is black. I think this happened to me last time. So, so there it is. Yeah, we can see it. We can see it. I got okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Well, I guess we will have to figure out what's happening here. Um, and and yes, I uh, want to just thank uh, Dan for his presentation. And yes, he's been very good at passing along uh, the comments when he receives them. And so uh, we have been reviewing those and uh, giving consideration to those uh, as we move forward. And we'll continue to work with uh, Dan on, on addressing those comments and, and any other comments that come up through the process. So um, as Dan mentioned, this is site-specific uh, zone change for the three blocks along Rest Acres Road. Um, next slide, Adam. 
Uh, this just gives a sense of the site location. Um, the blue and the orange areas uh, highlighted or outlined in red are the uh, blocks in question. Uh, the remaining portion of the lands, uh, uh, as Dan had mentioned, was previous plan of subdivision, the Edgar subdivision, where phase one uh, was um, essentially registered and uh, developed uh, by by the Edgars and units uh, were sold to uh, to builders. And the dashed line that you can just see in black there generally reflects the phase one uh, split of phase one and phase two. And then Lozani purchased uh, the phase two lands um, in 2018. Uh, next slide. So the official plan, as previously mentioned, uh, uh, identifies these lands, both mixed use and portion urban residential. Uh, the mixed use uh, really was uh, intended um, back in the day of the uh, Paris uh, settlement area, uh, secondary planning time, um, as higher density and providing that range and, and different types of uses along the Rust Acres Road corridor. And that's what's reflected in that mixed use designation. The urban residential uh, is uh, re the residential component uh, that provides for the range of residential uses. Um, Dan outlined the existing zoning uh, uh, for the blocks. And there is a difference uh, on blocks 97 and 98, uh, which is the RM2, which relates to uh, uh, townhouses, row houses, um, stacked townhouses, and uh, street fronting townhouses up to 12 meters in height. And then the C51, which is essentially at the corner, um, includes the uh, commercial or retail, the, the commercial uses and the residential uses up to 12 meters in height. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this gives a little more detail on the request. Uh, the back-to-back -to -back townhouses really are townhouses that are uh, um, you know, put together uh, at the rear wall. Um, these types of units are becoming more common uh, from a market perspective as an affordable, uh, small-a affordable, I'll call it, an attainable uh, priced uh, housing type. Uh, these types of units recently have been approved in uh, the Nith Peninsula zoning and in St. George. So they're a housing type that uh, provides you know, some additional range um, into the market. The purpose of the bylaw is that in discussions with staff, uh, the bylaw is very uh, prescriptive in how it defines different types of units, townhouses, what stacked townhouses are, and there is no uh, interpretation of the definition where back-to-back -back townhouses would fit. And so we worked with staff and uh, then determine that the zoning bylaw would be required to include these back-to-back -back townhouses as a described or specific use within the blocks. The back-to-back -back townhouses uh, are, you know, being proposed within the same height, the same regulations as would be permitted with any of the other townhouses within the block. Uh, the low-rise apartments, uh, again, uh, the, the height that's being proposed at 12 meters is already the height that's permitted within all of these blocks. So we're not requesting any additional height that would have otherwise been permitted uh, within the blocks, uh, just a different housing form. And the zoning also is not proposing to change any regulations associated with coverage, setbacks, or parking. So whatever the bylaw requires for parking now, that's, that's what we would be designing to as far as parking spaces. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this gives you just conceptually an idea of what the units look like. 
uh, the back to back concept. So picture, you know, the, the front and back would, would look the same on those units. Each unit has a garage and the driveway parking space um, uh, for, for the, uh, the homeowner. The low rise apartment concept, this is a, an example of a project that Lausanne has constructed in, in another municipality and you can see uh, the proposed height um, at 12 meters, again, <laughs> with Dan's response on what does a meter to height look like, uh, 12 meters could range from three to four stories. In this scenario, you can see there's a, a, a three-story building. Uh, what I want to also speak to is that the bylaw is not proposing to remove any of the commercial uses in the C5 area. We have actually been exploring um, what a mixed use building might look like in that C5 uh, zone. And so that is something that, uh, that, again, it's not that the commercial is being removed, it's something that's being explored as to how would that mixed use uh, fit within context of uh, proposed building. Uh, next slide, please. So the proposal is to, add uh, a new form of townhouse, uh, one that's not a defined term in the bylaw, but uh, from a massing and scale and size uh, is not much different than what is already permitted in the bylaw. Uh, to add the uh, four-story residential in blocks 98 and 99, uh, maintain the commercial uses, uh, site plan approval would be required for each of the blocks. Uh, so that would address the landscaping, the site lighting, the massing, what do the buildings look like, where's the parking, the grading, and all of those details. Um, there are no additional units proposed. So with, the, with these changes in the zoning, uh, we're not proposing to change any of the, the permitted number of units that were established through the draft plan of subdivision. Recall some time ago, we were before council about uh, changing some of the zoning and uh, we, we were specific in identifying the number of units as it relates to two matters, uh, uh, the stormwater management capacities um, and uh, the sanitary capacities that were designed for the subdivision. So we're not proposing with these changes that any of the previous approved unit counts would change. And we're also not proposing any changes uh, to the bylaw uh, that would change the regulations as we know that um, parking and landscape area and building coverage and building height are important elements of what the bylaw is regulating at this point in time. Uh, next slide. I do um, just have uh, one minute remaining. Great, I'm, I'm just about done. As far as conclusions, um, in, in our opinion, the proposals uh, implement the direction of the official plan for the types of uses that are intended uh, in the official plan for this area. Really maintaining the intent of the bylaws it relates to housing, uh, housing form and massing, and as it relates to the existing regulations in place related to setbacks and, and height. Um, and it will be consistent with the plan land uses and unit counts and the original plan of subdivision. And happy to answer any questions this evening. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, yeah, at some, we're gonna go to the committee and for any questions of the uh, applicant. And then after that, we will turn it over to the public. So from the committee, um, I see Councillor Howes, Gatward Pierce. Okay, and if you think of anything, put your hand up. Uh, but we'll start with uh, we'll start with Councillor House first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Dave. Um, thanks for the the information, Dave. Um, can you educate us a little bit about back to back townhomes, which I I perceive to be uh, a somewhat new trend. In, in residential building. And, and I think there's a, there appears to be a perception when here, people hear back-to-back townhomes, 
they 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 may picture um, more people, more cars, um, and 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 I think I heard in your presentation that in this case, at least, um, going with back-to-back townhomes instead of uh, traditional townhomes is is not increasing the unit count. It's not increasing the height, and it's not increasing the need for parking spaces. So I'm I'm curious as to from the builder's point of view. Uh, just uh, why the the shift towards um, towards uh, the back to back townhomes? Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, through you, Chair Miller. Just uh, I want to clarify the one comment on the increase in the number of units, uh, because what uh, what what I want to be clear on is it's the number of units that were originally approved in the plan of subdivision, say for example, block 97, uh, were 100 to 120 units. So we are not intending through the zone change to increase the number of units beyond that approval. And I just do that to clarify because I, I don't want it to seem that um, townhouses and back-to-back -back townhouses wouldn't increase the number of units on a block of land because the back-to-back -back townhouses um, are a denser form of townhouse just by nature of their construction um, because they share the rear common wall. Uh, so there's an ability to, um, uh, to, to plan the blocks a little more efficiently and effectively. Um, and that's really the difference. If you pictured two rows of traditional townhouses and pushed them together at the rear wall, uh, that's that's the back-to-back -back townhouse. Um, and the other regulations that I was speaking to uh, and not proposing to change yet. So the, for example, the bylaw currently would allow a three-story townhouse uh, within, within the lands with a parking requirement and the back-to-back -back townhouse, the same three-story uh, unit is gonna require the same number of parking and it has to meet the same height. So from Tom Brown Drive, if you're looking into the site, the townhouse, a three-story townhouse at, as you look into the site would appear the same as the back-to-back -back townhouse from a, from a visual and, and massing perspective from the streetscape. Follow up, Mr. Chair? Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Just, just so Dave, what, what is the appeal of, of going the back-to-back -back route from the builder's point of view? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the, there's, again, it's an efficiency in design. Um, and in this case, on these blocks, um, the ability and the design to um, uh, to meet the the density cap established in the plan of subdivision. Just uh, if you can picture the grade coming off Rest Acres Road down into the site, um, it it provides you know there's a narrow block of land and the back to back just provides a greater efficiency in the design uh, to to get the the uh, unit counts up to the permitted uh, density. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Gatwin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you to Dave. Um, so thank you, you've supplied um, block 97 is 120 units. Can you, do you have the numbers for block 98 and 99 there? I do one second. So 97 was 100 to 120, 98 mm -hmm. was uh, 30 to 40, um, and 99 was. Uh, uh, so I have it as 16 residential and commercial. So it was the concept of a mixed use building. Right. Thank you. I recall when we did the Southwest Paris plan, we talked about having businesses on the bottom and 
apartments, people living at the top of those right. commercial buildings. So you mentioned you're exploring that. Um, is that a requirement? Because I think, as Councillor LaFerriere mentioned earlier, part of a commu complete community is having some services that assist the people in those subdivisions. They can walk and get a loaf of bread or a, a bag of milk or whatever without having to get in the car and travel up Rustic's Road. So I certainly hope um, that there will be commercial. That was the intent when the plan was designed. And um, my other question is, the corner lot where the temporary sales trailer is, what is the plan for that when the trailer is gone? Uh, through Mr. Chair, uh, the sales trailer, like that, that portion will be incorporated into the design of the larger block. Behind? Um, East? It, the, so the the sales trailer will be removed, and the right. the portion of land that the sales trailer is on, that will just form part of that block, and there'll be a new design and and townhouses within that block. So it'll just it, it'll integrate itself into the into the block. Okay, and and so um, my last question would be. The commercial um, C5-1 on lot 99, you mentioned you're only allowed 16 residential units. How large is that block? And is there room for um, like a plaza similar to what is on Rest Acres Road? Um, I, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I don't know the exact size of the block. Um, I know it's it's not as large as what I'll, uh, the Vicano parcel that's just further up Rest Acres Road. It's it's probably a quarter of the size um, of that parcel, so it's not quite the same scale, and okay. the access to it is is much more limited um, than uh, than that parcel. So block 97 in the plans you showed didn't appear to be much larger than, they're all kind of similar in size, those blocks. And I'm wondering, um, 120 to 100, or 100 to 120 units, um, I expect that must have to have underground parking then. Is that correct? because there's not room for all those cars on that little block if you put in that many units there. Uh, right, uh, through Mr. Chair, we we have been working with uh, county staff on the design of that block. Uh, underground parking is, is not required uh, with the uh, proposed unit type that has the garage and the driveway, and then we would have the uh, the additional spaces and visitor parking. Um, so what we will do, um, I'm going to suggest that for the next meeting is we will have some time to further uh, work through the designs of these blocks and have discussions with staff on the design of the blocks relative the, to the zoning so that when a report comes back to uh, committee and council, you'll be able to better visualize how the fit uh, of uh, units may be on these blocks. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, we'll go to Councillor Pierce next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, a um, couple of comments and a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, Dave, you just, uh, you just spoke of potential drawings so we could uh, see better how the units are going to fit on those proposed uh, lots. I wish you would have had that today. 
uh, when this is here for information, not necessarily when it's come back to us for uh, approval or non-approval. But anyway, uh, we'll wait to we'll wait to see those. So, um, as was said previous, you touched on a couple of things. You've reiterated the fact that there there are no more units, extra units. Um, your building sizes are are height wise are still the same. Um, you're, you're, you've stated that the, the parking that's going to be available is the same. It's not changing. I guess my, my simple question to start off with, if there's no more units, the height is the same, the parking is the same, I guess my question is, why would you, why would you even propose changing what was already there? I'm trying to understand the thought process that Lasani has put behind this. Uh, through Mr. Chair. Um the the design of the blocks and the, the types of the units that are being proposed relates uh, both to uh, the market uh, associated with with the types of units and then also the efficiency of, of the design on the blocks so should the blocks be typical townhouses uh, that would give you know one uh, one range of uh, potential units on the block. Uh, based on back-to-back -back townhouses, that's giving a, a more efficient or more yield on those blocks uh, from a unit perspective, but still maintaining the overall unit count. So I, I guess I should clarify, and, and if I'm, I'm not trying to be confusing about it, the the proposed back-to-back -back townhouses will yield more units on those blocks than say what a typical townhouse uh, design. But the overall unit count is not going above the approved subdivision unit count. Okay. So, so that said, thank you for that. So with that being said, and you're talking more efficient build and more efficient use of the land, does that mean that if in fact this does go through that there would be more green space on those specific um, lots? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, the green space would, would still be the requirement associated with the landscape coverage. Um, and I think the green space, um, there may be reduced green space because a typical townhouse would have uh, kind of a, a, a rear yard amenity space, but in this case, the rear yard is, uh, is, is, is the buildings are pushing together. So we have to make up uh, the green space through the landscape or other amenity area. Okay, um, just a couple more here, Mr. Chair, if I could. Uh, so let's say this does not go through. Are you saying that if this does not go through, there's no efficient way to get the total number of units on these uh, seg uh, sections of land? Uh, through Mr. Chair, if this, if this does not go through, there'd be other ways to look at uh, achieving the unit potential. It could be uh, stacked uh, townhouses. Um, combined with other types of three-story townhouses. Um, we just believe that uh, this, this housing product and this design is, uh, is a better fit for the market and for the area than, than those other options. Okay, I will, I will close with, uh, with a comment, Mr. Chair, if I could. Um, just with what you just said there, Dave, that you're saying that uh, this type would be a, a better fit for the market and a better fit for the area. I can honestly say that every single letter that we've received is against this proposal. And I'm sure you will get a copy of these as it's all been said, uh, but I have never had anything come through to council in my time where everything has been on one side or the other well, I'm telling you now, every letter that we have received is against this. So what I'm suggesting here is that it is not good for this neighborhood as far as the neighborhood is concerned. No comment to that is necessary back. I'll leave you with that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, just to remind the Mr. committee. Mr. Chair, may I, oh, sorry, Mr. Yeah, okay, Chair. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, no, go ahead, respond. And, yeah. it's, and, and I, I offer this uh, uh, as potential uh, 
information that may assist and, and not, a, not a, as a response, because I appreciate uh, receiving the comment. Um, I think what we may do in, in working with staff is uh, have an illustration that would show, uh, for example, the Tom Brown streetscape or, or other components uh, of the site with what would be permitted and what we're proposing. And it may provide a comparison that, that I think may answer a lot of the, the questions or maybe concerns, um, because I, I think there may be some, uh, uh, some concerns that can be addressed by seeing, seeing that comparison of, uh, of what we're proposing of the townhouses versus what the existing zoning would permit uh, under under the types of townhouses, so we will do that as well because uh, because I think it will it will address some of the comments, and uh, and I'm hoping that would be helpful. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, just Councillor Pierce and the rest of the committee. Just I know I know John, you're you're close to it. Um, <laughs> um, keep in mind this is just questions of clarification you will have a chance to comment when we actually get that motion on the floor to receive okay so just just you know we we do have that opportunity so i don't uh because i don't want to get into a debate with any applicant and sometimes that's what happens when we bring forth comments um i'm going to go to uh council Ferrier next he has his hand up thank you mr chair i, I believe Councilor chambers may have also had his hand up before me but but that's okay i can I just want to let you know um, so uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Dave, uh, through one Dave to another, um, you're, you're not intending to increase the units, but could you, uh, well, actually, you've now clarified that you are intending to increase the units or get to a max unit. So I'm, I'm still a little confused on that one. Um, maybe I'll shift my question. Regarding the commercial piece, if we change the zoning, you're saying we're not intending to increase the units, we're not intending to get rid of the commercial piece, but could you? And I, I asked this because you had brought this up even within your own, within the presentation, it was brought up that, you know, the, the Edgar's sold to you and, and what they intended is not what you necessarily intend. So what you're intending today with the change in zoning, the opportunities, the intentions don't mean that much. If, you know, you sell or if you, if you can do something, you very well may do something. Can you put a little color on that? Uh, sure. Through Mr. Chair, with uh, with the proposed zoning and the zoning that's in place, and and uh, maybe if it's okay, if we could ask uh, Dan to clarify. But um, I believe the zoning uh, would permit residential above the ground floor, and what we're asking for is uh, permission to in the C5 uh, for a residential building. So. It would it would permit the ability to just build a residential building without commercial. Okay, thank you. So that, that answers my question. I, I I don't love that, but it does answer my question. Um, my next question is that you you made a comment about affordability. I just want you to clarify, because you said affordable, and then you said well, not really. Smallly affordable is what I mean. Uh, really attainable. I know it's a confusing thing. We have lots of people watching today. Can you clarify that this is not affordable housing by any public planning definition? Uh, through Mr. Chair, thank you for asking that because that was my intent to clarify there that it's not intended as uh, as affordable housing uh, in any intention uh, under the under the, the planning or municipal or provincial definitions. Thank you. Um, two more quick ones, Mr. Chair. One is that you know, we received numerous complaints about the construction, sort of construction etiquette, litter, neighborliness. I've talked to you about this before with other builds uh, in my ward and in Ward 3 uh, with Losani. Um, can you speak to that and how you can control it? Uh, it's been, again, an ongoing issue according to residents near your builds. It's a big drain on county resources. It's a big drain on our time because we get these complaints throughout the year and bylaw and and the rest, and it's a major irritant to neighbors. Um, and it's gonna come up, I know it's gonna come up from some of the people who are gonna present and there's no ability for back and forth. So let me ask you directly sort of on their behalf yeah. um, about that piece. Cause we have photos, we, we get these calls all the time. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and when I saw that comment and I saw the photos and the information that uh, the county staff had provided, um, I had 
I sent an email to uh, Lozani, uh, vice president and the project uh, manager um, in the plan of subdivision, advising that these comments were coming in and uh, that they, they need to be addressed. I know they're outside of kind of the realm of zoning and planning. Um, and, and in my role, I, I can't force uh, really any change. It's really the, the site management, but I did share that information with them and said that, you know, the, the, while it's not a zoning matter, it comes up and we need to respond. No, I appreciate that. It, it, it's, it's the Lasani name on the billboard, so it, it, it looks to you in, in that way. And my last question, I'm going to try something a little different I've never tried before. Um, it, I hope that I'm not overstepping here, but uh, you mentioned earlier, Dan said he sent you some of the comments. You've seen some of the comments from residents. They're your customers, essentially, uh, in addition to being our citizens. Are there any of those concerns that you want to speak to while you're here? And I know you have an opportunity to come back when this comes back to council, but is there anything you want to address from the concerns, the numerous and varied concerns, as Councillor Pierce said, from members of the community? Um, and, and you can't unless I ask you. So I'm, I'm gonna ask you and see if there's any you wanna pick off there. Yeah, uh, thank you and, and through the chair, maybe just a few. And again, I, I, I want to respect uh, the comments that we have received and, and the comments we're going to hear. Uh, but when we review them, we kind of immediately get a sense of, of items that we know we'll need to address and work through in, as part of the process. Um, and, and I do believe in my, my comments and following up uh, Councillor Pierce's comments to provide a picture of what's permitted on those lands now versus what would be the difference in what we're proposing from a, a scale and mass and, and look perspective. Um, because the, the, in introducing the back-to-back -to -back townhouse, um, while it's a different housing form, it's not, in my opinion, it's not changing um, kind of what the intent was for townhouses to locate in those blocks. Uh, also want people to understand that, well, if there's an increase in the number of units, uh, we are also then going to have to increase the number of on-site parking spaces. So we're not asking to increase the units and reduce the required parking. Um, so we would be meeting the county requirements for uh, for on-site parking. The other uh, items uh, relate a lot to the site plan process in which we work through with the county and agencies and the county as the approval authority and those relate to kind of uh, the landscaping, uh, site lighting, appropriate buffer and buffering and fencing from, uh, from adjacent uses. Um, and what the buildings will look will look like in the end. Uh, so there's still a lot of work to be done on the details of each of the blocks that we work through with the county in accordance with site plan guidelines, the official plan and the zoning requirements. Uh, and so I just wanted to raise that, that a lot of details are addressed through that process as well. Okay, Mark, you said that was your last question. I will go to uh, Councillor Chambers next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, my question that I had written down was a, similar to Councillor LaFerriere's last question. Uh, and I think you've answered that you may want to add something to it. My question that I wrote down was, how is your application going to change to take into consideration the public input that you have acknowledged that you have received uh, by the many emails that you've, you've gotten? Do you want to add anything to what uh, you uh, answered Councillor Ferrier's question. I, I think through Mr. Chair to Councillor Chambers, I, 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 I can't say tonight what we're going to change. Uh, what I can say is we, we've heard the comments, we've even heard uh, uh, the questions and, and the comments from council uh, or committee. And uh, we'll, we'll work with staff on, on what the proposal is and uh, in consideration of changes that, that may need to occur. And uh, if there's no changes, um, it still will be our responsibility to respond to the questions and the comments and, and we'll be certain to uh, 
to do that in the case where, where there's not changes, we'll provide information and, and clarification. And my uh, second and last question, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to uh, Dave, uh, specifically with regard to Block 99, uh, you indicated that uh, uh, the request for the zoning change would allow you to uh, uh, build a residential unit in the commercial area. And you, you said a uh, uh, residential unit or uh, use. So if, if you can build one uh, with the zoning that you're asking for, could you build two? And if you could build two, could you build three? And perhaps uh, going to the extreme, could you, uh, with the zoning request, uh, essentially uh, cover the Block 99 with residential rather than commercial, even though commercial uses are allowed it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to uh, build them if you can build residential units. Could you respond to that? Yeah, through, uh, through Mr. Chair, uh, Councillor Chambers, I, I, I think you're asking what uh, Councillor Laferrier asked me is, uh, does this proposed zoning give us the ability to build just residential without commercial? And the proposed zoning would, would allow for that to occur. And, and just to clarify, so that that could happen. You're intending not to, but if uh, uh, in the future there could be a change of ownership or a change of plans, conceivably with this zoning block 99 could be a residential block if we allow this zoning change to occur rather than a commercial block, which it is now, albeit that uh, residences could be uh, attached uh, to uh, commercial uses. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, and and I would actually um, uh, look to Dan to confirm, but yes, uh, because the current zoning would allow the residential above the commercial. My that's my understanding. Um, so it could be either or in the future with the proposed zoning, uh, but if it wasn't changed on Block 99 it would be uh, someone could build just a commercial building or commercial with residential above with the existing zoning. Is that okay, Councillor Chambers? Good, okay. Um, are there any other speakers? First time speakers, Councillor Are there any other speakers? Okay, we'll go to, or questioners. Uh, we'll go to Councillor Bell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry for the late arrival and I've missed probably most of what uh, Dave said, but I think my comments will, he'll understand them. Uh, in my short time on the council, we've, we've experienced a number of developers bringing forward zoning bylaw amendments. Uh, I think of one which is just down the road from where you're looking at, which has changed, I think, two or three times now. It was initially an institutional uh, zoning. And then it became an institutional zoning with the ability to build row houses. And the next step it became, then there were row houses and no institutional. So you can, ex I think you hopefully can accept that the nervousness and, and the, the concern that this council has about changing uh, zoning bylaws in the way that you're, ch you're proposing. And it really relates to the question that Councillor Chambers and Councillor Ferrier asked, that when you start this ball rolling, we don't know where it's going. So there's a hesitation there that you're going to have to seriously overcome. I think just one more comment, if I may. Uh, Council, Councillor Bell, Councillor Bell, this is the time for questions of the applicant. You have time apologies. for comments when we're in deliberation and that's when the, uh, the motion's on the floor. And, and, and again, going back to what I said to Councillor Pierce earlier, I don't want to debate the applicant. That's not what we're here for. He's here for clarification information we and we we have the benefit of being able to debate that later so are there any other questions before i go for looking for a second one? okay uh councillor gatwer we'll go to you very briefly thank you yes it's just one short question um mr chairman thank you the um back-to-back -back townhouses that there seems to be a lot of concern about i did have a 
a conversation with somebody like, why would anybody want one? Oh, he said, I'd buy one tomorrow because I don't want a backyard. I don't want to cut grass. I want to go to the cottage on the weekends and I can buy a back-to-back townhouse and not have condo fees. So is that the type of market that is opening up for seniors looking to downsize and not want all the yard work that comes with a single family home through you, Mr. Chair, to Dave? Uh, through Chair Miller to, uh, to the councilor. Um, I, I do not venture into what I think the market needs or wants. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, I would just say that what you had just uh, shared is probably an opportunity for someone um, I, I think there's a lot of different builders looking at different housing forms and housing types. And uh, that's what we're seeing, you know, uh, across different communities in Southern Ontario is what are the different ranges and types of housing that provide uh, future homeowners uh, with options to, to purchase? In this case, it would be uh, to purchase uh, their unit. Okay, well, I asked that because you said the market studies. So I thought you knew the answer from your market studies. So okay, I, I have... are, are there any other questions from committee? Okay, we'll go to Ferrier for the second time briefly. Yes, Mr. Chair, very briefly. Um, I, I have a feeling Councillor Bell was actually going to ask a question at the end of that context. And I'll, I'll ask the question because I have a feeling what I know what it is. With the context of the example he gave, uh, what assurances can you give us that that won't happen here this time if we were to change the zoning? Is that a good question, Count, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair? That's, that's a fair question. And, and, okay. and if Councillor Bell is going to ask that, I apologize, but I, did, I didn't see a question coming, so. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 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 through you, Chair Miller, um, I, I'm not, uh, I feel like I've uh, I've answered this and and uh, trying to just um, make sure I'm clear on it. Uh, the zoning we're proposing would permit a standalone residential building. That that is different than the zoning that is currently in place, which is uh, kind of has the mixed use with the commercial on the ground floor and residential above. So what's being proposed would potentially permit uh, the ability to build with no commercial. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain what I'm hearing, even though these have just been questions, I've been hearing through the questions on uh, uh, Council's concerns, and uh, I think that's something that we, we will have to uh, uh, discuss with our client and further discuss with staff and, and be prepared to uh, 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 consider Council comments and what that means going forward. Thank you, Dave. Um, before I turn over to the public, I'm going to ask one question myself. Um, mind you, I had to look up back-to-back -to -back townhouses. I had to Google that. I didn't know what it was. We don't have that definition on our planning act. Um, apparently, that's coming later on uh, tonight as part of our package. But the, you, 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 you are uh, um, looks like you're applying for a four-story uh, apartment buildings. But the picture you showed us, I just want to be clear because it kind of confused me, uh, but you, still, you, you showed a picture of a three-story, but that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about one more story, correct? We're, we're asking for a height, a uh, 12-meter height, and then a 12-meter height in that picture was, was a three-story building. It all depends on kind of the, the height of the floors and distance between the floors. Uh, but that, that is an example of the building that's being considered on... Uh, on um, uh, kind of blocks 98 and 99. Okay, and just a follow-up question with that, um, because I've heard it, I've read it in a few emails. Um, any ideas, the, the visibility from the third floor into people's backyards or anything like that? People that have bought houses now, that are living there now? Uh, from the third floor into the, over to the residential? Looking, uh, um, yeah, looking to the uh, to the east. Um, I, I don't know, Mr. Chair. Something we'd have to take a look at at 
kind of a cross section and what yeah. that looks like as far as a distance. I just, uh, like I said, I know that I've, I've read, I've read those concerns. So, okay. Thank you very much. Um, take a little break. Uh, what I'd like to do then is turn it over to the public. So I'm going to declare this part of the meeting uh, open to the public and uh, Adam, I'm going to rely on you to help me with this part. Um, if there's anybody from the public that would like to speak, I'm going to have you bring them up and anybody that wants to speak, I need you to give us your name and your address. I need that for the clerk. Okay. Um, a, it helps us identify you like who, who had the concern, but B, um, if you're not on the list, to be called, um, that's one of the ways we can use it too. So Adam, I'll let you uh, bring them up in order and uh, we'll go from there. We'll see how uh, thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. There are two members of the public here to speak to this application. Uh, I believe Sa Samantha Lee is the first one who has her uh, mute off so she uh, can proceed. Okay, uh, Samantha, you go first. Again, give us, well, we got your name, Samantha Lee. Give us your address and uh, um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I live at 5 Edgar Place in Paris. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we okay. can hear you and thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to read my presentation because I'm much better scripted, so just bear with me. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of Council and Planning staff. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak at this meeting regarding application number ZBA4420DN. As you know, my name is Samantha Lee and I live at 5 Edgar Place, right at the corner of Tom Brown. We moved in last January and chose this lot based on the fact that right across the street was to be front-facing townhomes and a commercial plaza behind. The idea of being able to walk to a coffee shop or a restaurant or even a convenience store for some milk was very appealing. The pandemic and the major construction along Rust Acres has heightened our awareness of how cut off we are from the rest of the town how landlocked we are, and how much something as simple as walking to grab a coffee or a lotto ticket seemed just so important. The idea of the county being asked for a zoning change by Losani to keep their options open is a scary and devastating thought. When we built our home, we were made aware that part of the subdivision covenants did not allow for anything more than two-story detached or semi-detached homes. The lands in question are the highest point in this small subdivision. Anything larger than a two-story will overshadow the backyards and look directly into them. For those of us in the lower points of the subdivision, four stories will look like six or seven. They will create a wall for those of us who have to live with it every day. And for those coming into Paris, that will be what those people see coming in off the 403. There's also concern that this application is being proposed before the owners take possession of their brand new townhomes without knowing that a couple of four-story apartments are being considered literally right in their backyard. About 20 people paid about $700,000 for a townhouse. So how will this major change affect the value of their property or the ability to resell it for at least what they paid for when other towns across Rust Acres on Flag Avenue are selling for under $600,000? And how will this affect the owners who are building million dollar homes in close proximity to the lands? Did you know the average cost of building a single detached home in the subdivision starts at more than $850,000 and it's a million plus for a two story. We're also concerned that the recent change to Edgar Place not exiting to Rust Acres, more traffic will be directed through this neighborhood to get home. We're looking at over 100 residential vehicles plus visitors and delivery companies just in the lands referred to as Block 99 if the zoning change is approved. There will be a tremendous amount of traffic in this area caused by the change on Tom Brown Drive and adjoining streets. And as noted at a recent planning meeting, this is of major concern to the residents of Mile Hill subdivision. I'm also concerned at the lack of communication by the county on this proposed change. Neighbors five houses up the street from us did not get notice of this major zoning amendment request. There are two small public notice signs far from the roads and sidewalks and we're also under a stay at home order and can't visit to discuss with this with our neighbors. This should have been made more public and I hope the owners who are about to take possession of their new homes, who will be directly impacted and most affected by the change were notified. I know the 125 meter, meter, uh, meter radius is a provincial rule, but surely the county could have made exceptions when this major change was involved. We've been told this is just being received as information, but we all know where this leads. In many cases, even just up Rust Acres Road, 
A developer who already had the zoning for an apartment building wanted an additional 30 plus units, and it took outcry from the Granville neighborhood, which was lucky enough to win their case. If you allow the zoning change, it likely won't be long before their want for st four stories becomes 12. I know there's huge demand for smaller dwellings and apartment rentals in Paris, but apartment buildings in this particular subdivision is not the answer, nor is it the appropriate location. Single story, smaller unit towns or condos, moderately priced like Van Els up the road or on Whitlaw Way could be one solution for downsizing seniors and first time homeowners instead of back-to-back $700,000 towns. Also, high rises and low rises do not fit into this neighborhood. With the exception of Losani, this is a subdivision of local small town home builders. In fact, this was supposed to be an entire subdivision of local builders, but the landowner sold out after much pressure from the previous council. However, that's another story. In my opinion, the appropriate place for high density would be on the other side of the Brant Sports Complex, where one high rise is already planned. There's also the Volcano, Vol Volcano land currently zoned industrial across from the sports complex on Rust Acres that could house many of these buildings mixed in with commercial. I'm also curious as to why the miniature towns of commercial plazas on Rust Acres did not include apartments. There's an entire community of just business space and it seems no one considered building studio apartments above them or adding a few low rises amongst them. If you look around, apartment buildings are not in any other subdivision in this area. And I will point out that one will be going in on Rust Acres and in the new industrial park being proposed by Nancy Tompkins near the 403. So a couple more don't need to be put in this particular community. What this community does need is small business. Without a commercial plaza on Palm Brown, there are no amenities here for people without transportation to get to. You're also filling the area with people who will have nothing to do including families who will be taking their kids to the arena when that's allowed again. Commercial not only provides essentials to residents of a neighborhood, it also provides jobs and taxes. The current plaza on Rust Acres is about a kilometer away. I imagine a cab out here would cost at least $20. When working on the official plan, county staff and councillors talk about walkability and building entire communities where we can walk to to get our hair cut, buy groceries, enjoy a spa day, go for a bite to eat, or maybe grab a coffee. Love local brand, support and shop local has been the theme of this county. Let's please keep it that way. Don't force potential new homeowners to look into other communities to shop, dine, or even start a new business. And if this pandemic has taught us anything, it's that no one wants to live on top of each other. Demand for apartment style living has taken a hit. People want a front door, a backyard, and a piece of grass away from elevators and 400 square foot apartments stacked on top of each other. The biggest reason we're seeing so many people fleeing the big cities for small communities like ours. Please understand that I have no issue with allowing a more diverse community and living availability to our area. But I am concerned with how this will impact our community in ways of garbage collection, water usage, wastewater, roads, water runoff, traffic, sight lines, and a lack of conveniences. The existing zoning allows for medium density, enough density for the area with go without going to the extreme of allowing low-rise apartment buildings. I feel that Losani is asking for a lot without being forthcoming of their plans. And as someone who has had the pleasure of dealing with the destruction and lack of respect for the homeowners here for the last six months, I feel I can honestly say that they don't care about our community or the residents. If you give them an inch, they will take a mile. I want to end with a couple of questions. Do you think adding in hundreds of more towns or apartment style condos will solve the housing crisis and help young people or seniors downsizing when these units are selling for over $700,000? What do you think rent will be if they are rental units? Unfortunately, the reality is people are being squeezed out of our community by greed. They're being outbid by people coming in from the GTA with more money and they can't afford to build brand new. People are renting out their houses and towns here for $2,400 or more a month. Others are buying units and renting them out as Airbnbs instead of long-term apartments. And if you think you want to believe that low-rise apartments might solve the housing problem, ask yourself this. How did the low-rise apartment building on Mechanic Street help the situation? Well, I actually like the building and I think it will keep people in and supporting the downtown. My point is that developer did not build modest, affordable apartments. I ask you to not support a change in zoning for blocks 97, 98, and 99. Thank you for your time and consideration.
Okay, thank you, Samantha. Um, I, I did pull a couple questions out from your presentation, and, and we'll we'll ask uh, the applicant um, after all the uh, speakers have come. Um, some of the questions I, I don't know. Um, you, you must know um, that they weren't really um, applicable to, to to the applicant in this case. So um, I'll go to our clerk then, Adam. Um, do you want to bring up the next speaker then, please? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. The next speaker is Alan Bolterman. You per, can proceed, Mr. Volterman. Alan, go ahead, and then, like everybody else, no more than 10 minutes, but I don't think you will, but go ahead. Uh, no, uh, actually, uh, thank you for taking the time to hear, uh, hear myself and, and uh, Samantha Lee. Uh, I'm fairly new to this area. Um, Alan, sorry to interrupt. Um, I cannot hear you very well. I, anyone else is having, you, I can hear you, but you're very, very quiet, so I don't know if you can speak a little louder. Yeah, sure. Um, First off, I'd like to say thank you for uh, taking the time to hear from me. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, quite a few people in my area. I'm a little further on the other side from where Samantha Lee is. I'm on Nine Pitt Chambers Place. Um, and I'm speaking, I, I, I'm, everybody here is very friendly, very open forum. And uh, the, the consensus from every single person that I've spoken to is that this is a terrible move. It is a 180 degree turn from what we were told by Lasani when we all purchased our properties, which is a major concern. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is I, I, my wife and I came from, uh, from Oakville, but I've lived in Hamilton, Florida, BC, Alberta. I've lived in other places. So these back-to-back -to -back towns may seem new, but they're not. In, in the Peel region, in Toronto, they're there. And with all due respect, <laughs> It's nothing new and it's, it, they don't really add anything to the community. I'll, I'll be brutally honest. For, you, you see those back-to-back -back towns in strips of thousands where there isn't detached homes that are $800,000. You see apartment buildings nearby, a little, you know what I mean? So with all due respect, the back-to-backs are a way of Lasani maximizing profit on their land, which I understand. I'm in engineering. You got to make money. I get it. Totally get it. However, no one in this area wants them here. The back, they're talking about providing parking. We saw the plans. Did you know that there's a whole, uh, the townhouses up the street from ours, there's tons of rentals there. Guess where they park? They park on the streets, even though there's two spots and a garage, right? Now he said, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe, maybe somebody can chime in and just tell me if I heard wrong, but these back-to-backs are not going to have a basement, correct? With in a pretty well, well, We'll, we'll take off. I'm going to write down all your questions okay. and then we'll get okay. up the I want. So our you're concern, asking about garages. Yeah. Now, our concern there is if you have no basement, where does the storage go? Garage. Guess what that means? That means that second car that was going to be in the driveway is now on the street. And if you add that by 120, they're parking in front of my house. And I, I, I'm, I'm not really cool with that. I don't think a lot of people on my block would be cool with that. We've actually had issues where workers come and block our driveways with Lasani. Sorry guys, but you guys are really dropping the ball Lasani. But um, I, I'd like to, like to touch on a couple points. Um, the, the expand transit line, uh, what transit are you expanding? That's right. Um, our main concern in, in, in my area is, is the devaluation of our property. When you put these down, the, these, these, we understand that a commercial townhouse unit is great. However, if you're from anywhere outside of the Brant area, a lot of these commercial residential units become commercial slash rental up top. The guy that owns the business is not living there. So if you increase the rental units in the area, you devalue all these 800,000 plus homes. And I didn't move here to get, to get what I could get where I was. I moved here, we all moved here. Most of the people here moved here, whether it's from Kitchener, Oakville, Toronto, Brampton, everybody moved here for the same reason. Because it's a beautiful town, everybody's friendly, there's no chips on your shoulder, and there's a lot of respect. When you start bringing in a mix of too much rental, with all due respect, and I'm not saying that everyone that rents is, uh, has a chip on their shoulder, but when you bring in low rises, even if 10% of those people are somehow bad, in the, in the, then you have car break-ins. You know what I mean? I'm just, 
the apartments in a residential area like this is, is a very bad move. And I really think you guys should strike it down. Um, also 120 units. Wow. That's a lot for a small piece of land. Um, but the affordable housing line, I, I like, I know everybody here, uh, kind of giggled under their breath when we heard the affordable housing line because when we got our house we got it at a reasonable price and the very next development right behind us our house went for $180,000 more in the next phase so as these things go the, the prices keep going up so the affordable housing for these uh these towns is, is definitely a farce and uh, we caught you Miss Annie. uh Samantha brought that up as well um I got one or two more points uh, the, the green space, the back-to-back -to -back townhouses, there is no green space. You, there's a little green space at the front, and uh, we, all, we all moved here to get away from the asphalt of, of the GTA or Peel or uh, KW. Um, but the, 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 main, the main concern that every single person that I spoke to in this area is, is obviously the rentals the devaluation of all the current properties here also that they pass this when half of the people that can vote don't even have ownership of their homes yet so all the people within that 120 meters it's all empty houses behind us there's four four rows of houses that have no say so they were told something else they're going to walk into this house and be like oh great i got a, i got an apartment so um the main thing is is we heard the commercial commercial is okay However, how are you guys as a council gonna regulate rentals? Because um, everybody is just gonna buy these properties, rent them out, you, you add rentals, your property value goes down. It, it will happen. Um, that's really uh, all I have to say with respects to everybody in this area. The main thing was parking, rentals, because we're already having issues with those rentals in the Lissani corner over here. Um, street parking, not adequate parking and uh, just traffic, just general traffic. Okay, thank you very much for your time, guys. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, is there anybody else, uh, do you see Adam, that's from the public that wishes to comment on this application? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, those are the to only two individuals. Okay, um, I'll, I'll go through the, the, the um, <laughs> I'll, I'll go through it procedurally. Um, I'll ask the second time. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this application? And I'll ask a third time. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this application? Being told there's none by our clerk. Um, I'll close this part of the meeting to the public. Um, and I'll ask um, if our applicant can come up just to, just to, uh, like I say, uh, we had some lengthy comments there, but I, I pulled out a couple questions, uh, Mr. Aston, if you could kind of help us through that. Um, and, and if I missed any, and you, you, you wrote them down, please, please address them. Um, so each, uh, each of the people from the public asked about current house values that, that may not, I don't know if that's, um, in your wheelhouse, if you want to take a crack at it, go ahead. If you think that, if you see any impact on the current house values that people are paying. Um, I had a question about traffic. Um, maybe you can speak to that. I, I, I don't know if there's a study being done on that. And then uh, the third question that I have, um, are there garages? Now from the, the diagram you, show, you showed, there were garages. So. No, no, it wasn't the garages, sorry to interject. It was, uh, we were, I heard Dave, Dave or uh, Dan, I can't remember who, but I heard them state that they're, these are, there's no basement for these back-to-back -back towns. Yeah, my apologies. So if there's no okay. basement, then now, they're, now their garage becomes their storage, and then that extra car is now on the street. And okay. it will my, my happen. Apologies. Point, of, point of order, point of order. Yeah, I know, I know. Alan, yeah, thank you, you spoke to Okay, so are there basements? My apologies. Um, and Dave, I will go to you, uh, if you can help us out with those, those yeah. questions. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm not going to venture into the question of property values. Uh, well outside my expertise. And, yeah, that's and fair enough. That's what I thought. Um, uh, garage versus basements. I did write down the question is, is there basements? And with the this product, uh, as far as I understand at this point, there's no basements proposed. Uh, it's, a, it's a slab on grade uh, type of product. Uh, and then traffic, 
uh, there was no traffic study required or requested uh, as we worked through the pre-application and the process with uh, county staff. Uh, they could perhaps speak, speak to why in their opinion, but uh, in mine, it's because the unit count, the total unit count wasn't uh, changing from uh, the previous unit count in which uh, was, was the kind of overall subdivision design and the planned roads. Okay, thank you. Yeah, was there anything uh, you think I missed, Dave, or are we okay? No, that's uh, I, I. That's all I had as far as questions that I could I could respond to. Okay, and then I will respond to one concern, and it was mentioned in a few letters, um, and, and we've heard it uh, many many times. Uh, neighbors didn't get a notice, um, or they feel that the notices don't go far enough. I do know staff do what they can, right? They do what they can. It's 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 even harder. Uh, in a newer subdivision such as this where yeah you don't have people living there even though they may have purchased it so um, they try and address it as best they can um, and we do put out notices and at the same time uh, we have a lot bigger signs uh, of a zoning application change so we, we do try um, but we do hear the concern so it's not like I say trying to uh, trying to make sure they're doing what they can to let people know so it's not any um, it's not intentional, any oversight. It's just, like I say, it's just what happens. Okay, so thank you, uh, Dave uh, Aston, and uh, we'll bring this into the within the committee, and there is a motion on the floor, so I, I'm gonna get a, see if we can get on the floor, get a seconder, and then uh, any comments, we'll, we'll go from there. So can I get a mover to get this on the floor? Moved by Mayor David Bailey to receive for information, seconded by uh, Councillor House. Is there any comment? this or questions and I seen Brian did you have your hand up Councilor Coleman okay he's just stretching his arm I do see Councilor LaFerrier go ahead please Mark. yeah thank you thank you Mr. Chair um I, I do look forward to the the report I think it's going to be really important I think I think there are a lot of valid issues with the and concerns that we've heard um but some some not so much right like I I'm you know, what, what, however I end up voting on this, it won't be because of a, a renter's bias. Uh, we've all been renters. I, when I was a renter, I never carjacked anyone, I, I promise. And I don't think anybody here who was a renter ever did so either. Uh, in fact, most of us are renters at some point or another. And that's a really important part of our housing mix. Um, that, especially if you're uh, paying $2,400 for rent, I, I doubt your, your criminal uh, um, desperation is, is not as high as it might be. But um, I, I think there are a lot of valid concerns, especially with Comparing this to something that we discussed at the last planning meeting, which was um, the cannabis production for a building, right? Based on concerns about the potential of what might be zoned, and you know, again, we're going to get drawings and things like that. That's that's good, but I, I have worries about that. The other piece, though, is that what what is available to be built now? It's it appears to me, and and maybe staff can speak to this. It appears to me to be similar to what is being built on on Willow, but near me. Uh, which I see as their four-story um, townhouses, essentially. And I mean, that is a different mix than we have all over the place. So, you know, a part of me goes, what's the need? Another part of me looks at it in terms of, I know there's a definite need for that complete communities piece and the commercial uh, zoning. I do have worries, like Councillor Bell said, about, you know, the rollback like we had with institutional, and now we don't have any institutional in that one spot. Um, but yeah, they're, the the... I think there are a lot of concerns that need to be addressed with this, but the one I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't uh, give much weight to is the rental piece. I, I, again, um, that, that's a whole other discussion I think we need to talk about in the future. So uh, I, have, I have concerns, but I'm looking forward to the, to the report. Okay. Um, Councillor Chambers, I saw your hand up. Go ahead. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, and obviously I support receiving the uh, uh, input that we've uh, uh, gotten tonight. One of the issues is going to be, and I don't know how to uh, uh, alleviate the concern, is that at our uh, next meeting, uh, the uh, information that has been presented is going to be digested uh, by the applicant and presented at our next meeting, which will have a uh, recommendation attached to it. And at that point, the, uh, the, the public will not have been able to see uh, some of the uh, uh, things that the applicant is gonna bring forward to address their concerns. 
uh, they will be able to present it at that meeting, but due to the COVID concerns and the, the, the problems associated with having public input on Zoom uh, without having uh, a lot of people to, to hear, I guess what I'm getting at is we're going to get a lot of information that is responding to concerns at the same meeting within a, an hour of having to make a decision on that. And that doesn't give the, the people a chance to see what the applicant can bring forward to address their concerns. So I don't know how you're going to get around that. Uh, it would be almost nice to have uh, a, a, a kind of an intermediate meeting where the applicant can uh, bring forward the uh, uh, some of the, the things that they wish to present in response to the public uh, in order to see uh, the committee would be able to, to, to see the response of the public to that. So I, I know it, it's difficult in the COVID situation uh, with normal public meetings, but uh, maybe staff and the applicant can, can work on something whereby the many people that have uh, responded with emails uh, have a chance to see what the applicant is, is, is suggesting to alleviate some of their concerns. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave that with uh, the staff and, and the applicant and, and hopefully uh, at the end of the day the, the, the public input will be uh, uh, able to influence the decision of, of council, which is why we have these uh, public hearings in the first place. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Chambers. Um, that's a good point. I, I just want to add too, because we have something of an application. We're lacking a lot of details, and this is to garner public input. But what if those details change so much between now and the actual when we're looking for a decision? So um, I'm going to look to Dan and Matt uh, if they could. Uh, weigh in on this and is this something that they could look at um, before we have a, a further meeting on this? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, that's a, that's a very good point. We do have a number of options available to us as, as staff and we can uh, and have done on a number of applications during this uh, kind of COVID times, uh, arranging a public meeting um, format in, in this same format, digital format, where the applicants are able to kind of lead that discussion and present um, kind of some of the information that they've been able to uh, digest as a result of this meeting and, and the comments we've received. Um, and then perhaps we can look at uh, organizing something like that with the applicants. Uh, we can also post uh, any updated information on different public engagement platforms. Uh, we have our Engage Grant engagement platform that we've just introduced. So this, this would be a good example of something that we could uh, post that information on there where members of the public can kind of freely access that um, as we go along. Yeah, because uh, that, that, that would be appreciated. So, okay, I appreciate that, Dan and Matt. We'll leave that with you guys. Um, <laughs> work your magic. Any more comments? I've seen, um, okay, Councillor Pierce, I see your hand, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna, um, I appreciate Councillor Chambers bringing that up. And, and what I was also gonna suggest too, is as Dave said earlier, he could potentially have some, you know, renderings of drawings of what things are gonna look like. I think that's that's crucial to, to get that information because I think, um, you know, it, it's probably gonna be, you know, a couple cycles before this, you know, even a cycle or two before this is back. So that gives a month or two uh, before this is back to us again. So I, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's, quite pertinent that we get the information out with uh, with drawings so people can see them as to what things are going to look like. Thank you. Fair enough. Um, Councillor Gabbard, I've seen your hand up. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do, through you, does the clerk have a copy of Ms. Lee's presentation? And could we get a copy of it? As well as Mr. Bolterman? Uh, Adam? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, if Ms. Lee can uh, forward me her written, uh, this is a different written submission than we previously received. So if she forwards that to me, I can certainly pass that on to council. And I don't know if Mr. Volterman has any written comments from his presentation, but if he does, then he can forward them to me as well. Okay, I'll leave that up. Yeah. Okay, I'll leave Thank that you. up to you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Councillor Bell. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to support this uh, motion to receive, of course, but I think there's a message that needs to be taken back, uh, and maybe Dave Aston is the man that has to do it, that Lausanne uh, have a um, public relations battle to fight here. Uh, it's not just in this situation where there are complaints about the, where, the way in which they work on the current sites, it's the way in which they're, they're communicating to residents and people that will be residents, but just down the road from this site at 1067 uh, Rest Eggers Road, we've had to stop Lozani from doing work which they weren't permitted to do. So I think they've got some real work to re-establish trust and confidence in what they propose to us. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Pierce. Any other comments or questions before we call the vote to receive? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor to receive. Opposed. Mr. Aston, thank you very much. Um, we're going to continue on with our meeting. Um, this will take us to the public hearings under the Planning Act to consider staff recommendations. This is our section eight. So these are the ones where we actually will have a recommendation in front of us to, uh, to uh, uh, approve not approve. Um, the first one is 8.1 application ZBH 0420 slash JK applicant the corporation of the county of Brant and this is uh, 50 High Street um, and I think uh, most of us are familiar with it but we'll uh, we'll go to the planner and uh, ask them to present. Sorry we'll ask Jessica because I gotta use the word he asked Jessica to present thank you. Thank you Mr. Chair and good evening uh, members of committee. I'm just going to take a quick moment and share my screen here with you. And just let me know when everyone can see that. Nothing so far, Jessica. Yes? Okay. Nope, 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 nothing oh, so far. Sorry. Yeah, we're good now, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so as you had mentioned, I'm here this evening to speak to application ZBH4, uh, 21JK, and it has to do with 50 High Street in St. George, and as you all, I'm sure, are aware, that currently is occupied by Russell Heights. So this evening, what staff is looking for is a recommendation of approval on the lifting of the holding provision currently on the property. So currently the property is zoned holding provision, special exception, residential multiple. So that's H-RM1-7. And so by removing the holding, it would allow for development to move forward on site. As mentioned within the handouts that you received this evening, what is actually being planned here is a basically twinning out of what already exists on site. Phase two of Russell Heights, and it would be for a maximum of 35 units. And that would be consistent with the current site specific zoning on site that allows for a total of 60 units dedicated to seniors and those with disabilities. So exactly the same demographic that is um, occupying the site now in phase one. And so we have attached a few renderings this evening within the package as well for uh, the benefit of committee. I will note that um, while we have attached these, these are very rough in concept. Uh, the site will undergo a full development uh, review through site plan control. So there may be some changes through that process. Um, but again, the unit count maximum on the site is 60 units and that was undertaken through a rezoning back in 2009. And staff is not planning on asking for any changes to that nor to any of the site-specific standards that are established under that bylaw as well. It's simply uh, just to lift the holding provision and allow for the development to proceed. So with that, that concludes my comments for this evening and I'm happy to answer any questions of council or members of the public here to speak to the application. Okay, thank you, Jessica. And I'm gonna ask you not to share your screen. Okay, perfect. Um, and so I'll turn it over to the committee and ask if there are any questions of Jessica. And I don't see any. Okay, I don't see any. Um, so I have two questions to Jessica. One is um, there comments regarding accessibility in the report. 
I don't know who made them from staff, but they were fantastic. Um, as far as, um, you know, accessible people, maybe they should have, or for pe people with accessibility requirements, perhaps they should be on the ground floor. Um, was there enough parking for accessibility and all that? So I'm just wondering, um, is that, I'm hoping, or well, is that something you're going to take into consideration when we construct that? That's my through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so absolutely, those comments were received through some early circulation having to do with the project. Um, so like I mentioned, some uh, rough concept drawings are being circulated to gain some valuable feedback from all of our departments and our agencies um, to basically ensure that we get it right um, and that when we develop this, um, it is catering to those who we are keeping in mind uh, throughout the process. So again, seniors and those with disabilities. So we definitely want to ensure that whatever we do construct on the property functions properly and to meet everyone's needs who will end up residing on the property. Okay, yeah, like I said, great comments. <laughs> definitely pay attention to them. Second question, uh, 35. Um, I know we have issues. Uh, we're at capacity with wastewater in St. George. Um, now, I know there's some developers, they've got a holding um, designation on their properties too. So how do we explain to those that are waiting <laughs> that we can go ahead with this development, but not their development? Sure, so that's a great question. And to you, Mr. Chair, so basically, um, with that, uh, we do have Rob Walton here tonight, who um, is from our operations team, and he can probably speak better to um, servicing and availability than what I can. Uh, but I will note that within our policy documents currently, we do make affordable housing a priority in the County of Brant. So when there are opportunities and opportunities for infill development, which are appropriate and uh, can be can be accommodated, then we should be making those a priority in our community. But I will turn it over to Rob Walton to further speak to uh, some of the servicing questions there. Okay, thank you. Rob, you're up. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to the, to the committee. Um, thanks for the question. And uh, in St. George, um, the system is at very nearly at capacity, but there is a small amount of capacity available there. And there is a list of, of uh, properties or developments that, that have capacity and are allowed to develop. And this has been on, this property has been on that list for some period of time. And the 35 units have been allocated for this. So there are no constraints to this happening. Okay, thank you very much, Rob. Um, I've seen a couple hands up, so I'll go to Councillor Gatward first. Um, go ahead, I must have jogged something there. Go ahead. Thank you, just a quick question um, through you, Mr. Chair, to Jessica. Um, where will the visitor parking be? I, I know that there's spots on that plan for every unit to have a parking spot and um, some accessibility spots. Maybe there needs to be a, a spot for um, e-ride because they'll, they might be using that building to pick people up. Um, that use our service. I just didn't see any visitor parking. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Gatward. So through the um, development review process, site plan control, we will be ensuring that there is appropriate and sufficient visitor parking on site and that it is accommodated in um, the parking area the additional parking area that will be in the future. Now, where exactly that's located on the site, that still remains to be determined as we go through that development review process. But we will keep that in mind and thank you. Great, thank you. Hey, thank you, Councilor Gower. Councilor Ferrier, you had your hand up, go ahead. Thank you, quick one. And yes, to, you did jog something, a, a question. Um, I'm not sure about the current, the, the current build on High Street, but uh, the future one. Um, can there be on that site development piece uh, exploration into um, and not necessarily a community room, but uh, a room for the folks who are there. Um, on the community safety and well-being um, team, and putting on my social worker hat, one of the things we see with accessibility constantly is, uh, you, you know, Councilor Gatward brought up e-ride, and that's that's good. But often you'll have folks who have similar needs in the same building, and having a space where you could do COPD program, and go to them instead of kind of them coming to you. 
uh, makes a lot of sense. And it can be open to the public, it might not be, but can, can that be something that we, we make sure to look at on that main floor, some sort of programming room, I guess would be the best way to put it? Yeah, uh, Jessica, any thoughts on that? Sure, through through you, Chair, to um, to Councillor uh, Leverrier. So that's absolutely something that we can take into consideration and those comments are great. I know that many of you have different experiences and different backgrounds dealing in many different areas, um, especially housing. So those comments are greatly appreciated and please feel free to connect with me via email as well if you have any specific thoughts. The earlier the better. Um, it allows us to fully consider all of the options. Okay. Thank, thank you, Jessica. Yeah, no, I know. I appreciate what you said, Mark, because I, I know when I read about accessibility, my antenna go up as well. So um, any further questions for Jessica before we open this up to the public? Okay, seeing none. Um, Adam, I don't believe we have anybody from the public in the room. Hi, Mr. Chair. No, there's no members of the public here to speak to this application. The virtual room. So, but like I say, I will go through the, the motions and I'll, I'll open this up to the public and ask uh, for the first time is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this application i'll ask a second time is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this application and i'll ask a third time is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this application see none um i'll close this part of the meeting off to the public and we'll bring it into the committee and i'll ask the committee how they wish to deal with it uh, i see a hand uh on a sofa councillor wheat Moves, moves the recommendation. I'll move the recommendation. Thank you, sir. I uh, will go to uh, Councillor McAlpine to second it. Correct, John? Yep. Any comments, questions? Uh, yes. Councillor House? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Just uh, what a great project this is. And I, I wish we were seeing half a dozen of these projects all across the county. Um, can't, mm -hmm. can't wait to see this move ahead. Thank you, Councillor House. Um, Councillor Laferriere. Uh, yes, another quick one. Uh, we were speaking about rentals in the, in the previous. Um, do we have any idea and why they're good at, at times, especially in this one? Um, do we have any idea about rent structure? Is it is it is it a cap or is it based on a percentage or do we not know any of that yet? Thank you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Leverrier. So we are still working out um, the details. I know that Michael just popped on here, so he can probably speak to um, some of those background details better than what I can as far as finances go. Michael, can you help us uh, with some of those questions? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And first of all, can I get a thumbs up that you can hear me okay? Great, thank you. And uh, so I think um, a lot of the details of this project are going to be sorted out over the next couple of months. Um, I think all of you are aware that this is a project that, that we see happening, but we've got some things that have to fall into place for it. So, you know, one of the things that we needed to deal with was this zoning matter. So that's why it's in front of you before. Details like the program format, the, uh, you know, kind of details about the build, community space, things like that, parking, they're going to come um, to you in the next few months because this is a county project. So county council is eventually going to have to approve this design. You're going to have to approve the release of the tender. And you're going to have to approve the budget. So I think I think we're a bit premature on some of these questions because again, we're you know we're kind of focused on our project plan. And I did provide a memo to council on the status of the project um, that kind of gave you you know a flavor of where we're at with it. Um, so some of these things you know we're we're going to be talking about at the staff level and then we're going to be bringing forward to council so um we're looking at and, and we are talking with the folks at inwell about different project or, or program formats you know the uh, like you know, the, the the percentage of market rent uh rent geared to income these kind of things so, so but but we haven't completely got there yet and um projects moving fairly quickly and there's there's a bunch of steps still ahead of us so hopefully that makes sense yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. I, we're, tonight we're just doing the planning part, the zoning part. So yeah. Okay. We'll see a lot more information in the future. Um, Councillor Wheat, I seen you raise your had your hand up. Go ahead. Well, earlier, I would just wanted to, as a longtime member of the board at Russell Heights, sewer and water capacity have been set aside for ages for a potential build there. There's not a wastewater and water problem whatsoever. Okay, thank you, Councillor Reed. Any other comments, questions before we call the vote? Uh, Mayor David Bailey. No, I, I would just like to, to thank uh, Michael and staff for pushing this forward as quickly as they have. 
Uh, it's going to be well received in the in, in St. George, obviously. And I do think that we should keep an eye on it for more builds like it in the county. Um, I think that every there's a lot of eyes on this project, and I think that we need to make sure that we support it right from the get-go and uh, help build it into the building that it needs to be, to be perfect and suitable so that we can do it again and again in the county quickly and on our own. So that's, that's a great opportunity. So thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jessica. And we'll call the vote, I guess. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments before we call the vote? Okay, moved by John, seconded by John. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Okay, I see none. Uh, well, brings us to our second item uh, for a decision, uh, item 8.2. This is zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA 35 slash 20 slash AW 485 Paris Road, former township of Brantford. And uh, this is regarding the pressure. So um, from Amanda. So Amanda, um, I'll call you if uh, you wish to present, go ahead. Thank you. I'm just going to share my screen. So let me know. I'll give you a show. You're able to see it. And we are good, Amanda. Perfect. Uh, so thank you. Through the chair, the applicant is proposing to rezone the subject plan with a site specific provision to allow for an aggregate recycling facility on lands currently zoned as heavy, uh, as heavy industrial. Uh, the subject lands are designated as employment are, and are located within the primary urban settlement area. Lands designated as employment contemplate for heavy industrial uses. Um, the site-specific provisions recommended by staff also include setbacks for the recycling facility in addition to the stockpile locations to ensure they will be located at the rear of the property. To address concerns raised at the information meeting in December 2020, the applicant prepared a dust management plan in an environmental considerations letter as well, uh, which was included in the agenda package. In addition to these materials, a traffic impact study and a noise study were submitted with the original application and have been reviewed by staff. Staff are recommending approval of this application and I can answer any questions the committee members may have. Thank you. Okay, man, that's a tall order answering any questions the committee any may question. have <laughs> regarding this application. So, okay, um, I'll open it up to the committee. Um, we'll start with, okay, I see Councillor Pierce and then we'll go to Councillor Gallagher. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, a couple questions if I could. Um, I guess it's on page 111 of our package 8.2, the proposal page. It talks in there that um, uh, the proposed aggregate recycling to be located in the southern portion of the property with crushing operations to occur a few times a year for approximately three to five days each. I'm trying to get an understanding with that said, um, and I'm not sure if, if we have the answer today, but can we just reconfirm how often they're talking trucks will be coming on site and uh, with the the raw with, with the raw material, and then going off site with the uh, the material when it's uh, been crushed. If we could get some sort of idea, how many are coming in, how many are going out, how often? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Based on my understanding, it's going to be intermittent, but I do see that the applicant and the agent are here, and they'll probably be able to answer better than I can. Yeah, and we'll we'll bring the applicant up then. Uh, after after we get questions from, from you. Okay, any other questions, Councilor Pierce? Uh, yeah, on page 117, when it talks uh, in regards to dust suppression, uh, I guess it's the, the bottom of the, the, the second paragraph in, in section three. Um, I'm just curious, like with, when it talks about uh, uh, putting mist on the, on the uh, material and that sort of thing, are we concerned at all about leaching of, of any sort of chemicals or anything into the ground with the amount of runoff? Uh, through the chair, I believe that's a more appropriate question for the agent than myself as they prepare yeah. the environmental letter in addition to the dust control plan. Okay. Um, I think what I'll do then, Mr. Chair, if I could, is I'll just hold my questions until they come on and I'll, I'll re-ask them then because I think the other ones are for them as well. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, Councillor Gatward, do you have the question for the planner, for Amanda? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the house that's on the uh, existing property, um, does the owner of this crusher live there? Or is it a tenant that lives there? Um, 
I'm concerned about the noise. What about the um, the dust? Um, at our first meeting regarding this um, application, the property owner from next door sent his agent and his his the property owner plans to build um, a restaurant and commercial uses next door. Uh, is there any plans to build anything on this pro property or is it strictly mainly for storing piles of asphalt and ground up concrete? Those uh, are my thank you through the chair. I just want to confirm that in the agenda package there was a dust control plan that was prepared um, by the applicant in response to comments received from the neighbor. And then as part of the original submission, a noise study was submitted, and they both concluded that there would be no adverse impacts on the surrounding properties. Um, the existing dwelling on the property, based on my understanding, is actually being used as an office and not a dwelling, but the applicant is on the call tonight and he can confirm that as well. Okay, thank you, Jessica. We'll wait for the rest of the answers. Or, sorry, Amanda. Amanda. That's okay. Okay, any other questions for the planner? I don't see any. Oh, sorry, what? just one last. Jessica, you said that the piles of, of um, storage will be at the south end of the um, lot and they won't be visible from Paris Road. But when I looked at the height of those permitted piles, they will be quite visible, will they not, from Powerline Road? Uh, thank you, through the chair. Um, staff have included site-specific provisions to make sure that the piles are not visible from Paris Road. And then based on the, um, the existing landscape on the property and the site characteristics, they wouldn't be visible as well from um, the other property line. From Powerline? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, see no other hands raised. Um, we'll go um, to the applicant and uh, if he wants to present anything on this proposal. Hi, good evening, Mr. Chair. This is Dave again. Um, Adam, I'm not sure, maybe, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll, I'll try to be brief in my presentation. Amanda did a great job covering off really the policy framework. And I'll try to respond to a bunch of the questions in the presentation. Although if not, um, uh, I'm sure I'll be asked. Uh, but just the next slide, please, Adam. Uh, so um, staff uh, provided the outline as far as the, the permitted uses. Uh, there's no changes to the existing buildings and the existing uh, residential is, is used as an office. Um, the clarification on location and the temporary nature of the use. Um, the intent is that uh, this operation, the, the typical truck flow, uh, four to eight trucks per day uh, through discussion with, uh, with the owner of the property that runs the operation, um, would come into the site uh, just based on their regular operations. And then the material would be stockpiled in the rear of the site as identified in the zoning location. And then one to three times a year, so quarterly, let's, let's say, um, uh, the crusher is brought into the site uh, and the crushing operation would then commence for the amount of time that it takes to uh, to crush the material uh, within the hours of operation that uh, that we identified there uh, as far as the use so that's the intended uh, use and and when we talked about the temporary nature of the use it really is brought in um, when the stockpiles are to the point that they need to be crushed um, and in talking uh, with with the landowner, there's no benefit to bringing the crusher in uh, without the stockpiles being to, to their maximum. That would just be a cost. Uh, so it 
you know, it, it comes in when they're at the point that the crushing needs to occur. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so here's some of the comments we received. Uh, again, these are, are the, the truck traffic, uh, the four day trucks per day, the, the volumes are, there could be a slight increase depending on the day and the amount of activity and the, the projects or, or, or regular operations that are occurring. Um, a dust management plan was prepared our understanding is that the adjacent property owner and what what they were proposing is in the ballpark of 700 meters from the site um, and uh, it, so that's a distance there uh, it needs to it need to have some consideration in context of the site and the zoning setbacks that we put in place and in the dust mitigation plan there are a number of matters that are considered uh, how, and, and one uh, councillor Pierce had mentioned, uh, what occurs at the time of the crushing. And uh, there's different uh, methods to deal with dust. It's not just uh, that crushing component that the dust management plan uh, speaks to. It speaks to a number of different items. Um, it recognizes the setbacks. It recognizes the current berm on the property. Uh, it also gives consideration to the vehicle movements on site and directing as far as uh, mitigation of, of dust and, and the, the vehicles moving back to the stockpiles. It talks about material preparation before the crushing occurs. And in the letter, there's also recommendations as far as monitoring and, uh, and a complaint process and how to deal with complaints. So the the dust mitigation plan uh, that was prepared, we feel, addresses um, you know, the, the dust uh, comments. With regard to the materials, uh, the envir environmental considerations memo uh, from, from our soils engineer, soil mat, uh, specifically was intended to respond to the questions associated with um, uh, materials and the groundwater and 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 those concerns, um, and concluded that uh, um, the materials do not pose any significant environmental risks, are considered non-hazardous, do not contain toxic materials, and are considered environmentally safe. So uh, that's uh, from our soils engineer. And then, as I mentioned, and, and uh, Amanda mentioned in her presentation, we worked with. Uh, staff to provide specific setbacks uh, with regard to the location of the crusher and the stockpiles uh, to address the comments of of making sure that this this op this component of the uh, business was uh, was contained and, and regulated in the bylaw. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is just the setbacks uh, that uh, that previously were. Uh, identified by Amanda. Uh, next slide. Uh, again, this slide showing uh, the context of the property in relation to surrounding uses, um, where the crusher and stockpiles are being proposed are to the rear of the property. Um, and uh, in our opinion, very well screened uh, from Paris Road and and uh, they're quite a distance from P Power Line Road with the uh, rail line and some vegetation also uh, also in that location. Uh, next slide. And as mentioned, the study's completed uh, as part of the application, the stationary noise, the traffic impact, both uh, previously re reviewed uh, by staff and, and no concerns, and then the additional uh, dust management plan and the environmental considerations memo uh, was also prepared in response to comments. I think the last slide is conclusions. Um, and uh, we're here requesting that uh, the zoning bylaw uh, as proposed be approved. Uh, we believe this um, is consistent with the PPS and the growth plan and, and supporting uh, uh, economic development and businesses within the community. Uh, it implements the official plan and uh, that 
the proposed use is com compliant with guidelines for environmental noise and that the additional uh, dust mitigation and env environmental considerations memo uh, we believe has addressed the comments and uh, again requesting uh, council support the staff recommendation this evening. Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, I will turn it over to the committee. Um, I'll turn it over to you, Councillor Pierce, uh, to answer your question, or do you have a further follow-up? Uh, no, uh, Dave answered the questions for me, so I appreciate that, and uh, I think that's all I have on this one. Thank you. Okay, um, I see Mayor David Bailey with his hand up. Go ahead. No, I, I would just like to thank the applicant and Dave uh, for, for listening to what we asked you to do last time, and you really did go to a lot of trouble to, to make this application um, easier to support that's for sure so thank you for listening and thank you for acting on what we asked you to act on thank you okay. yeah thank you just to that mr chair i i do want to thank uh uh jamie our client who uh worked with us through all the responses and was very open to hearing the comments and uh, uh and on the call you can't see her is stephanie murdich one of our senior planners and she worked uh uh, a lot with Amanda in working through those details. So it, it was a team and then there was Paul uh, Basante as well. So uh, that I just want to rec recognize and thank you for your comments and recognize everyone on our team. Okay, um, we'll go to Councillor Gallery, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on page 119, um, monitoring and record keeping and it talks about dust suppression measures implemented, um, heavy dust cloud emission is generated or observed from the site. A complaint regarding dust emissions is received. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, regular inspection and maintenance of the site should be conducted um who does that who does that and who ensures that if there is heavy dust clouds when they're loading gravel into dump trucks um, that the gravel piles are sprayed down to keep the dust down um, who ensures that the temporary or permanent perimeter fencing and windscreen is inspected and repaired when required. I, I, I have concerns, Mr. Chairman, about this because I know we had concerns regarding dust on another property that this applicant has in the county and bylaw. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, Joe, hold on, Joe. We'll, we'll, we'll stop you right there uh, before okay. we get in trouble. Uh, okay. let's, let's go to the applicant. Let's let, let so him answer the question. Who is going to who is going to address these dust complaints? Um, because I'm really concerned about that. Uh, through Mr. Chair, uh, what's being proposed or recommended would be, um, you know, the landowner or the applicant uh policing uh, the property based on the recommendations i think ultimately if there's complaints uh related to the bylaw those would be brought to the county potentially and uh investigated and then i think the onus would then be on the landowner to respond and it would be in their interest to be following the recommendations of the dust mitigation plan uh as part of any response to a complaint. So the owner should make sure the fences are in good repair and that the dust isn't flying when they're loading or, I mean, when they dump stuff on site, it's kind of hard to stop the dust at that point. But I, I guess if when they're loading, the, the gravel is a little, not really dry and dusty, that would help matters. But um yeah we do have bylaw and at one point the ministry of environment got involved because they supposedly looked after dust so that's why i'm so concerned about this whole 
dust matter. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman and Dave for your answers. Yeah, no, it's a fair enough question. Um, any other questions from the committee for the applicant? Okay, seeing none, uh, thank you. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, Jamie, for coming. Um, I will open up this meeting to the public and ask if there's anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this application. Hi, Mr. Chair, no, there are no members of the public here to speak to this application. Okay, thank you, Ann. Um, But I will ask a second time if there's anybody from the public that would like to speak to this application, and I'll ask a third time. Seeing that, um, I will close that part of this part of the meeting off to the public um, and bring it to the committee. And there's a recommendation on the floor, and it is moved by Councillor Coleman. It is seconded by Councillor Pierre. Are there any questions or comments at this time regarding this application? Seeing that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, that one is passed um, to Jamie because I don't think he's aware. Um, we have approved this at the uh, planning committee. This has to go to uh, the council meeting at the end of this month uh, for final approval, just so you're aware, okay? Um, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And, and, and just to, <laughs> while we got you, Dave, uh, I'll, well, you left already. I'm gonna thank him for, for oh. listening to that one. The I'm mayor still here. Said, and, uh, <laughs> no, just again, what the mayor said, I yeah, no, I just wanna reiterate, um, we appreciate you listening on this one. Um, and just keep that in mind when you're doing further applications. <laughs> to keep uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I always do and appreciate the comments of all the council. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you for coming. Um, okay, this will bring us to uh, item 8.3, and this is uh, zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA 32 20 RC plan of vacant land condominium. And this uh, is at 40, 46, and 56 Cedar Street. And uh, this one, um, I'll ask the planner to come forward, and that would be uh, Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, just uh, bear with me here. I'm going to pull up my screen to share uh, my presentation very quickly here. I'll give you a shot. I'll give you a shot when I, yeah, I'll give you a shot when we see it. Okay, we're good. I'm good anyways. Okay, brilliant. Thanks very much. Okay, um, so uh, the committee will recognize this application as this was uh, at the November uh, council meeting for an information presentation. Uh, the subject lands are located on the north and east side of Cedar Street, west of Laurier Lane in the former town of Paris. The subject lands are surrounded primarily by low density residential uses to the north, south, east, and west. There are also three medium density condominium townhouse developments located in close proximity to subject lands along Cedar Street. Uh, I apologize, I'll try and roll through this as well at the same time. The subject lands are designated in the official plan as urban residential. The applicants are seeing approval for a draft plan of vacant land condominium consisting of 20 single detached dwellings and a privately owned condominium road. The applicants are also uh, proposing to amend the current residential singles R1 zoning uh, to special exception R155 uh, to permit an increased lot coverage from 40 to 45 percent and to establish uh, special criteria for development within a private street condominium. Staffs have the opinion that this plan of vacant land condo and zoning bylaw amendment uh, both have merit as they are consistent with the provincial policy statement and conform to the general intent of the growth plan for the greater, greater Golden Horseshoe and the County of Brant official plan. Staff is therefore recommending that this application be approved uh, and I'm happy to take any questions at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Um, we'll get the screen to stop sharing if we could. Okay, thank you. So we can see. Um, any questions for the planner on this application? I see Councillor Bell, we'll go to you first. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one, one question of clarity, on page 128, uh, it shows, if I read it correctly, that Pinevest would provide private sanitary services, and yet on page 145 it says they would use municipal sanitary services. I, I'm just a little confused. I, I apologize uh, through you, Mr. Chair, for the sake of clarity that it is going to be fully serviced municipally. Yeah. Uh, the services located within the private condominium, uh, however, are the responsibility of the uh, condominium uh, as they're outside of the municipal road allowance. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions for the planner at this time? 
Councilor Pierce, go ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to, to Ryan. Um, just confirm for me, if you could, um, what's being proposed here is uh, um, single detached dwellings. Can you just confirm for us that um, um, if there are other choices and potentially they could be looking at putting in, um, you know, attached condominiums or other options than single detached homes? Ryan, can you? I apologize, uh, I just have to get my mute. No, that's correct. Uh, within the current zoning, single detached dwellings are the only permitted use. And uh, as well, um, that is the proposal from the beginning here with the developer. Uh, I, of course, would uh, invite Bob Stewart uh, to confirm, but uh, that is uh, that is the application we have in front of us is for single detached uh, development. Yeah, if I could, Mr. Chair, no, and I appreciate that, Ryan. What I'm getting at here is um, that's just the point. They have chosen to put single detached dwellings in here, but they could have chosen to do other things, is my point. Uh, well, I guess, I suppose, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, through you, the current R1 zoning is fairly limited in the permitted uses, and that's again to, I believe, it's single detached uh, duplexes. Uh, but that's that's very limited. The, the application we have before us is not certainly in any regard to intensify the types of uses on sites such as, as you alluded to, um, you know, uh, townhouses, uh, anything more than a duplex for that matter, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, any other questions for the planner at this time? Okay, I'll ask a quick question. Um, through, uh, to you, Ryan, or maybe maybe to, to Mr. Walton, because um, some of the letter writers are expressing concern about can Cedar Street handle it and what's going on with Cedar Street. Now, I, obviously, I know we've had some public uh, public meetings and I'm not aware of on this, but I just wondered if uh, maybe Mr. Walton, you could speak to, to what's going on with Cedar Street. What are we going to see and when? Just for some of uh, the people that express concerns about that. Through you, Mr. Chair, to the committee. Um, Thanks for the question. Um, so the 2021 budget for the County of Brant does include the monies to reconstruct Cedar Street uh, and um, provide the servicing for, uh, for this uh, uh, development and, um, and improve drainage on the entire street. Um, those um, um, services need to be in place before this development can uh, proceed. And it is the plan of um, of our department to bring a report on the uh, class environmental assessment in front of uh, uh, um, the administration operations committee uh, in February. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, like I say, <laughs> a few, like you said, there seems to be quite a people not aware of what's going on with Cedar Street. So maybe we can help get that information. Um, any other questions before I call the applicant? Okay, seeing none, um, I guess, is it is Rob Bamport, are you speaking to this or is it Mr. Phillips? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, Bob Stewart from Pine Bus is here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, that's all right. They only hire people named Bob, just so you know. Yeah, it seems. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna hand over to our planner, uh, Nancy Friday, just uh, as it relates to the planning side. Yes, good, e good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of committee. Um, I will be quick. Uh, we do agree with the recommendations of the staff report. We've reviewed the conditions of draft approval for the vacant land condominium. And uh, we really, we don't have a formal presentation tonight. We did one uh, previously in November. So we thought we would just take questions. Uh, Bob Stewart is here from Pine Vest. We have an engineer and myself, if there's any questions regarding this development. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Nancy. No, this is not the first time it's been before us. So, um, do we have any questions from the committee for Nancy at this time? Or for anybody, for, for anybody from the applicant side? Okay, seeing none. Um, again, Adam, I don't, is there anyone from the public you see? Hi, hi Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Mark Spong is here. Okay. Um, all right. We'll, we'll go to, okay, so I'll open this uh, part of the meeting up to the public and, uh, Mark, I guess you're going to be up. Um, keep in mind you got 10 minutes maximum, but please give uh, give the uh, the clerk your your full name and your your address for the record. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Mark Spong, S P O N G. 
Uh, we live at 52 Cedar Street. Uh, obviously, you've just been talking about Cedar Street here in Paris. Um, and our property, uh, the rear of our property is, uh, property line is adjacent to the land is being developed. Across the rear of our property line is a, uh, the full length of the property line is a row of trees. And these trees are, you know, semi uh, uh, mature trees. They're all in good condition. And they, they pretty, pretty well sit on the property line. Um, our concern is that uh, through development or through the condo management or through a condo owner, that those trees get removed. We would not want to have those trees removed. Um, and what confuses the issue a bit is when you look at those trees, uh, like I say, it's on the property line, or maybe the trees are just a bit on our side, but we look at the stakes out there, uh, we'll call it the property line for now. There's actually little flower beds between trees, but uh, somebody previous to us put a, a frost fence on our side of those trees. So it gives you the illusion uh, that the property line is closer to our house than it really is. And again, uh, the purpose of me being on this call is to ensure that those trees do not get destroyed, torn down, you know, that, uh, that kind of stuff through development, you know, through the condo management or through anybody being there. Um, so that's really what I wanted to, to get out on the table um, to make sure that it gets addressed and uh, that we, everybody's aware of those trees across the back. And again, we don't want to lose them. Okay, uh, thank you, Mark. Any other comments before we move on, Mark? Uh, no, 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 thank you. I okay. appreciate that. Okay, um, is there anyone else uh, from the public that wishes to speak to this application? Okay, I'll ask a second time. Is there anyone else from the public that wishes to speak to this application? And I'll ask a third time. Is there anyone else from the public that wish, wishes to speak to this application? Okay, seeing none, I will close this meeting off to the public and um, I, I won't attempt to, well, <laughs> can you just, um, to the applicant, the question is basically that row of trees on the property line. Um, are they aware of it? And is that something that um, they plan on protecting? And I'll, I'll take it. I can Nancy take this one, Nancy, if you like. Uh, uh, Okay. Um, what, one of the conditions of draft approval is uh, a tree saving plan and certainly um, it would be a benefit to um, both Mr. Spong and the, and the future owner to have those trees retained. So a tree saving plan will need to be prepared as part of the um, draft plan of condominium uh, conditions and uh, we are aware of the trees and um, at this point in time, there is the intent to save them if the the grading and and development etc. Um, for the new development allows for that. There may be some um, there are some stormwater drainage infiltration galleries at the rear of some of the lots, and that may cause the loss of a tree. But uh, every effort will be made to retain them. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, and if uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, can I also add to that? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Uh, uh, through you. Um, we definitely know and are aware that the trees are there. They are, uh, they are very, uh, it's a great separation from uh, Mr. Spong's property and, and our development and uh, absolutely, even in the design and, and Matt may be able to uh, provide some insight as well. We made sure that our infiltration galleries were not in that location specifically to try to avoid any root damage. Uh, yeah. And even our swales uh, aren't, Generally, they're at the very back of the property line. These are actually inside the drip line. So okay. we, we are taking that in account and um, through the detailed design, uh, through our submissions, the county will definitely be aware. And um, also we have to go through that absolute title process uh, to shore up all the property lines. And Mr. Spong will be part of that um, circulation and happy to meet on site as well to walk the property uh, anytime. Okay. I, I appreciate this. Um, like I say, we, we at the county like our trees, so yeah. uh, I appreciate Mr. Small coming forward too. So, okay. Um, I guess uh, we'll bring this uh, matter to the committee. Um, we have a recommendation uh, before us. So I'm going to ask the committee how, how they wish to deal with this. Okay, I see Councillor Bell moving it and I see Councillor Wheat seconding it. Is there anybody that has any comments or questions? Okay, I see two. I will go with Councillor LaFerriere and then Councillor. Thank you. Uh, my only question is about the, the previous portions of the neighborhood. Maybe this is the staff, perhaps it's to Bob. 
Um, but uh, the surrounding area, I took a walk around, um, and the surrounding area seems to be fairly newly built, but it can be kind of deceiving at times. Do, 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 does anybody happen to know when the other developments were built? Um, it, was, it seems like it's in line with those developments. You're talking about the developments on Cedar Street? Okay. Yeah, the, the other ones, yes. I could take a crack Go ahead, Ryan. Give it there. Mr. Chair, thank you. And yep. uh, my uh, limited career experience with the county, Cedar Street has uh, occupied a lot of my time. So uh, I, I would suggest that um, uh, I guess we can count three low, uh, medium density townhouse developments on Cedar Street, uh, being uh, two of which were uh, Pine Vest developments, which were built out in, I think it was 2018 to 2019. Uh, and that included development approvals at this committee as well. Uh, there was a further development, and the name of the developer escapes me, but it would be uh, directly across from number 23 Cedar, another medium density uh, bungalow town development. And I believe that was built out uh, in 2014, 2013 or 14 anyways. So uh, it's within the decade anyways. And then uh, and that, that, that's the most recent development within Cedar Street anyways. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Bell, you had your hand? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to add to Ryan's comment, I think it was Van Els was the uh, the builder, if I recall correctly. Um, I just want to pick up the uh, specific public concerns that were included in the staff report. Um, a couple of them related to upgrading Cedar Street, and I think Rob Walton covered that off very well. I think we've had, gone through a good process to uh, recognise that Cedar Street needed to be brought up to uh, good urban standards and I think we're going to go through that. Mm. Rob mentioned drainage, uh, but there's roads, there's sidewalks, there's uh, lighting, all of which will benefit the, uh, the total community around Cedar Street. Uh, there were a couple of uh, people complaining about 23 Cedar Street and the role that the developer played in that. I, I'm not quite sure if that's something that we in the planning committee should consider, but I could be corrected on that. Um, I think there was one general concern about dis dissatisfaction with, with the whole process. Uh, to my mind, I think uh, both Pinevest and the county have done the due diligence, and I, I'm more than happy to support this infill project. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Bell, I'm not clear on what you meant by the issues with 23 Cedar Street. Is is this, is this something you're familiar with, Ryan? Is this something that uh, is is pertinent to this application? If it's not, yeah, I don't. I definitely don't want to get into it. But I don't. I don't know what the issue is. So. Uh, sure, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I believe this topic was was discussed um, in passing as well at the November info meeting. Uh, this was with respect to the status of development within 23 Cedar and the works to be completed. Um, you know, as a staff, we are quite constantly pestering Mr. Stewart with respect to those items that need to be finalized. And uh, oh, okay. during the winter months, we, we, we really can't um, require any further development, especially with respect to asphalt. And that, I think that was one of the major components was uh, the top coat of asphalt to be finalized. I'm sure Bob could, uh, could clarify that, but um, that is certainly on our radar. Um, but with respect to the merits of this application, we unfortunately can't take that into consideration. So we are, we're doing our best. That's yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll leave it at that, right? Um, uh simply because like yeah it's it is we're looking at the, the like you say the merits of this application so we'll, we'll leave that alone for now but, um any other questions or comments before we call the vote those in favor opposed okay that's carried uh again to bob and nancy and matt um this uh goes to our council at the end of uh, the month so for final approval, just so you know, very much. Thank you. So this, good night. Good night. We, this will bring us to um, item 8.4. I am scrolling. My agenda. I know it's out Oak Hill way. Okay, so this is also Ryan, and this is the draft plan of subdivision file PS2 slash 13 slash MD and zoning amendment file ZBA 6 13 slash MD, and this is the Lauderdale developments. Um, so, Ryan, I guess um, I'll go to you, and uh, if you want to present. Yeah, thank you again, Mr. Chair. Um, 
So this is, yeah, again, the Lauderdale subdivision. This has been before this committee, I believe, on a number of occasions. And as you probably know from the file numbers, it's quite an old application, but uh, I've taken this over from my, uh, my former colleague, Mr. Davidson. So uh, subject lands are located immediately east of the Brantford Airport, west of Greens Road and north of Willowdale and Dalewood Avenues, respectively. Subject lands are also surrounded by low density residential uses to the south, uh, a natural drainage area to the north, and an elementary school to the east. Subject lands are designated in the official plan as urban residential, uh, sorry, suburban residential. The applicants are seeking approval for draft plan of subdivision consisting of 35 single detached dwellings, a stormwater management block, and a school park block. The applicants are also proposing to amend the zoning on the lands from Agriculture A to Suburban Residential SR, Open Space OS2, and Minor Institutional uh, N1 zone. Staff is of the opinion that this plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment have merit as they are consistent with the provincial policy statement and conform to the general intent of the growth plan and the County of Brand official plan. Staff is therefore recommending that this application be approved subject to the attached conditions. Uh, that concludes my remarks. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Are there any questions of the planner at this time? And who's sharing their screen? <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, see Councillor Bell. Okay, so we'll go to you, Councillor Bell. Yeah, I think it's uh, through you to Ryan. Uh, this predates my time on council. Is there a reason why it's taken so long to get here? Uh, I believe it, it had to do with some negotiations with respect to uh, transfer of the um, uh, the outlet. Uh, there's a stormwater outlet to the north that was transferred to the county recently. Also, um, as we may be aware of the airport elevated tank project, that was uh, subject, that would have subjected this development to a holding provision. And I think we were holding off for some time until the provision of water was available for this subdivision. Uh, that is available now. I'm sure Mr. Walton could expand on the status of that project, but to my understanding and confirming with uh, Alex Davidson, uh, water is readily or will be very shortly available uh, to this project. And so uh, it is, would be appropriately uh, timed uh, to issue draft approval uh, for this development. I hope that answers the question. Um, Councilor Bell, does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, actually, for, for me, right? Um, yeah, you mentioned this uh, is an older application. I recall clearly this application coming forward to count to, to planning in 2013 because I remember some of the people, and I know one of the uh, people that came actually has passed on. Um, but as far as the water goes, yeah, that was my understanding that, that there was on it because there was no water now that the tower is done. Or is do we have sufficient water now with the tower? Is that correct, um, or will it be online when this comes online? Uh, three, Mr. Chair, that's correct. Again, I have I had spoken with uh, the director of water, Alex Davidson, as of a couple weeks ago, and he's confirmed that uh, he's satisfied with the state of that project. I see, Mr. Walton has uh, chimed in yeah, here. Yeah, go ahead, Rob. Chime in. Through you, Mr. Chair, to the committee, uh, that water uh, system is uh, um, is functioning now as in the capacity is available. Uh, there's some minor um, um, uh, things that still have to be finished on that project, but um, that. Uh, the provision of water for all those developments out there that have been proposed. I believe there's three is in yeah. place. So, so we're there good to go. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of the planner before we go to the applicant? Okay. Seeing none, I'll call forward the applicant or the agent thereof to uh, speak to this uh, planning application. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's Bob Phillips from uh, Cahoon Engineering. I hope you can hear me. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Stephen Haggerty from Lauderdale Developments, uh, Joe Cahoon, and in another window, Rob Van Porten is available also. Yes, this is an application that was made back in 2013 uh, that was held in abeyance until the water capacity uh, was, was available for the development. Uh, that's given us an opportunity to uh, resolve other issues with the development uh, stormwater outlets, uh, as well as a lot of the details. Uh, through probably the, the last year, we've been working with uh, planning staff and you know appreciate Ryan's effort in uh, coming up with the uh, draft conditions that are before you tonight. Uh, this is 35 single family homes uh, on somewhat larger lots, uh, 70, 80 foot frontages. Uh, that are uh, 
developed on partial services, septic, uh, but the water is municipal. Um, we've read the planning staff report, worked with Ryan uh, uh, through the conditions and are very satisfied and look forward to moving this project ahead. Uh, I think that's pretty uh, uh, basic and uh, kind of outlines the project and I'd just be happy to answer any questions. Uh, any of us will answer any questions that the committee might have. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, are there any questions for the, uh, for the applicant? No, this, this is just another example of feeling confident about moving ahead with the project when it has been around so long um, and you've taken the time, you've taken a cooling off period, you've done everything you needed to do, we've done everything we needed to do. So I don't, I don't feel rushed, I don't feel like there's anything sort of um, going to bite us uh, if we approve this. I feel that uh, you, you've taken your time and, and you've presented this, this everything. Is Mr. Mayor, sorry to interrupt you, but do you have a question for the uh, uh, applicant? The, the, question, the question really is, if everything goes well tonight, when would you start your development? We would, we would hope to be start moving earth in the spring of this year, uh, as weather permits. And uh, we still do have some approvals to do through the county, and we'll proceed with those uh, if we're uh, successful tonight. And through through you, Mr. Chair, um, yeah. second question, would there be more than one developer involved with this development or is it all sort of handled by one developer? Uh, it's it's going to be, uh, well, one developer, obviously, but one builder will probably build all the homes within the development. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing none, I will ask one question uh, through you. Um, to, to, I guess to Bob, because you seem to be answering the question. You, you mentioned how the lots are a little bit bigger. Um, the lots are a little bit bigger, I'm assuming, because they're on septic. I mean, we can't get around that. Am I correct on that one? That's, that's correct. Okay. I think, yeah, okay. I, I'm thinking if, if if this happened came forward today, I, I think things might 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 have changed a little so okay i don't see any other questions for the applicant from the committee so i will open this up to the public um adam do we have anybody mr chair there's no one here present to speak to this application okay so i'll ask a second time is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this application and i will ask a third time is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak to this application and see you none um i will close this part of the meeting um public and I'll bring it to the committee and please note there's a recommendation before us and I'm going to ask the committee how they want to deal with it. I see Councillor Coleman with his hand up. He moves it and second by Councillor Goward. Any questions or discussions? Uh, Councillor Goward. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Well I can just say that um, it's unfortunate it took so long but we're moving forward with this and some of the other um subdivisions that were planned in that area and i'm so pleased that the water tower is finished even if it does have a checkerboard on it um <laughs> there was no way around that i've never had any complaints about it so i'm happy about that and i'm also happy about the block that's going to the school for additional playground and those are my comments Okay. Thank you, Councilor Gower. Any other questions or comments? I just have one. Um, I guess maybe to Rob Walton, if I could just ask you a question there. Um, we, 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 we obviously don't have municipal sewage there. Is that, um, is that, if we were doing it, I don't want to be hypothetical, but is that, so, is that so, something that uh, maybe down the road or being considered or thought about at, the, at this time? Through you, um, um, Councillor Miller, to the committee. Um, so there actually is a municipal sewage system for the airport uh, in this area, in this general area, but it has very small capacity. Um, the only other thing is the boundary adjustment agreement actually does give us um, 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 
an agreement with the city to extend services out to this general area to develop industrial commercial lands. I, I do not know whether that actually would allow us to do anything with the um, with any residential lands in this area if there were problems that were caused. But um, um, so it would be quite a process to um, um, extend services to this area. As you know, under the boundary adjustment agreement with the city, we're concentrating right now on the Keynesville project um, is where our concentration of extension of services is. Okay. No, I mean, this application came forward, you know, eight years ago, nine years ago, they've been working on, um, I don't, I don't expect to change, but I, I, I can't help but wonder if, it, if it, today it wouldn't, wouldn't look vastly different. Um, yep. Michael, you, 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 you came on board here. Is there, did you want to share some thoughts on that? Well, you, uh, um, uh, Chair uh, Miller, um, this application probably, if it came forward today, would probably have trouble getting approved. Okay. Uh, because of the change in uh, provincial policy statements and like for um, um, certainly partial services are not at all favored anymore except in very small developments. So um, if these three developments in this area weren't in the pipeline, they would have a lot harder time getting approved today than they would have had they not um, uh, you know, predated the, the, the existing policies for the province. Yeah, no, I, that's kind of why I brought this up because I, I, anyways, uh, go ahead, Michael. If you want to. Thank you. And, and just to, to Rob's point, uh, the boundary adjustment agreement with the city was for uh, 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 wastewater servicing for uh, non residential lands, only employment lands. So. Okay. But I, I like, I'm not going <laughs> to. Okay, fair enough. I, I, I know that's something that we're not going to open up today. And, and like, like, further to your point, Rob, I appreciate what you said because, yeah, if this came forward today, it would be vastly different. Okay, uh, any other questions, comments? Councilor Goward? Just as a result of um, General Manager Walton's last comments regarding if this subdivision was just in the, uh, new and being applied for currently, that it probably wouldn't go through because they're only allowing smaller developments on partial servicing. Um, General Manager Walton, can you tell us how small is that the old rule? Because I always thought it was five lots. Point of view, Mr. Chairman, we have a motion on the table, and now we're getting into a whole different topic of, of servicing the area. We're dealing with this application. I would suggest that we uh, continue to deal with this application by calling the question. Hold on a second. I just want to know how many yeah. lots, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah hold on there. Um, Council Government, no, yeah. Um, well, yeah, we, let's leave that alone because it's kind of an academic question, not relevant to, to, to this application. So any other questions, comments on the application itself? Okay, seeing none, I will call the question. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, see none, that is carried. Um, so that completes uh, an application for much. tonight. Oh, thank you. Um, and thank we you. will talk to you guys later. This will bring us to item 10.1, and this is uh, Brandon. Uh, he's bringing forward a general housekeeping amendments to zoning bylaw 6116, and he's looking for some, this is for information and direction. So Brandon, uh, is you want to present? Uh, thank you, Chair Miller. There's uh, no formal presentation with this. We're just looking for some direction, but I'm happy to field any questions or comments about the report or the attachments. Okay, Councillor Gatward and then Councillor Chambers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I had some questions on attachment one. And um, at the very bottom, lighting requirements and impact of lighting as lit signage on surroundings. Um, I'm pleased that that's going in there and that it would be for any new business, Brandon, that would be operating in, say, an existing location. Would that cover them? And I have a, another one on the back page I wanted to ask about. 
Right, uh, through the chair to Councillor Gatward's question. Um, so part of the focus, at least of this particular point, um, was more the greenhouses and, and cannabis production uh, lighting requirements that we were looking at. Um, but we are looking at extending those requirements to things like signage. Um, and it, as far as I know, it wouldn't apply to existing businesses, but if someone came in with an application for a new sign, for example, for that existing business, um, that's when these requirements would come into play. Okay, and 2.9 up above, um, I had that marked. Are you saying there in that uh, note that people that might want to put in a decorative pond or a concrete pad have to get defined that as an accessory structure to the property or not? Uh, through Chair Miller to, to your question there, Councillor Gatward. Uh, yes, part of what we're doing there is just making sure that the uses people are proposing are accessory to a principal use. Um, so for example, they would have to have a house um, or a dwelling unit on that property to be able to kind of put those decorative things in place. We find some cases there's a bit of a gray area um, with people coming in to ask about, say, putting a pad on a property, um, and we can't necessarily control that right now. Um, but if there's no principal use of that property attributed to that, that uh, um, project that they want to do, um, we're just looking at kind of tightening up those requirements um, to make it a little easier for staff's interpretation. Okay, and even a play, playground equipment, you have that listed. Why would they need permission for that? And it's, sorry, uh, through the chair to Councillor Gower, it's not necessarily that they would need permission um, per se. It's just that we're looking at regulating where, um, where they're allowed to do that. Um, so if they have a, an empty property, um, some of those things wouldn't be permitted. Um, and that's the same that we regulate uh, other uses as well. We're just looking at tightening it up for the particular residential uh, related uses. It doesn't add any extra restrictions for folks that are are looking to put those on their property because most of the time when they come in, they already have a house there. Um, it's just to make sure that we can control what properties um, already have those those uses attributed um, to be able to set up those accessory uses. Okay, thank you. And because I'm from a farming ward, a very agricultural ward, the very last item on on the back page, agricultural zone permissions is to do with um, reevaluation of permissions for commercial greenhouses versus farm greenhouses, on farm diversified uses versus farm production outlets. Is that to do with cannabis uh, or through, anything? Yeah, through the, uh, the chair, uh, Councillor Gatward. Um, not necessarily. Um, part of the reason we're approaching those changes is because of the provincial requirements for, for uh, the three types of uses that they allow in agricultural areas. So agricultural uses, agriculture related and on-farm diversified uses. Um, essentially, we're just tweaking those requirements to make sure that our policies are in line with our official plan and with, with the provincial policies. Um, as a way to allow permissions, not necessarily for cannabis, but for farm operators who are looking at, say, having a storage facility on their property um, to keep some of their goods there, um, to keep those kind of business things closer to home um, with the County of Brant's agri-food networks. Um, so not necessarily cannabis, uh, it's more kind of general agricultural related, um, and we do have the very particular requirements in our bylaw for cannabis, um, cannabis requirements, so those will stay as they are. Thank you for explaining that, Brandon. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Councillor Chambers. I, um, I was just going to move the, uh, the, the recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, I'll just ask if there's any more questions. Okay, we'll, we'll go to Councillor Bell because when, <laughs> when you're moving it, you're going to receive it, but I think you're going to move um, the timeline that I think Brandon was looking for. He was looking for some direction from, from the committee. Councillor Bell. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Through you to Brandon. Um, item 2.1, back-to-back townhomes, um, relevant to discussions even tonight. Um, I recall we approved a development that had back-to-back -to -back townhomes late last year. Um, how did we do it without the uh, regulations being in place or the permissions being in place? 
I see that Matt just jumped on, so maybe I'll I'll let him take a stab at that one first of all. You go ahead, Thanks, Matt. Brandon. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. And through the chair to Councillor Bell, that I believe was for the Brookfield condo. So that was approved and put in place. And um, I believe they're getting constructed. So we're, we're waiting to see how the finished product looks. So I, I guess the more general question, if I may just extend it, is you know, this was something new. Uh, we didn't have it documented. Uh, we're, we're now catching up. Is that the process we're going to follow? Or are we going to try to get ahead? Are there build forms that we know of that we haven't yet covered that may come along? Um, it's a good question. I think, I think one of the items that we will need to address in terms of built form in the future uh, will require a, a real deep look at our zoning bylaw. So once the OPR is complete um, and we, we get into the secondary plans, uh, I think one of the projects we really need to tackle is looking at our zoning bylaw, looking at what types of built form are being used today and seeing like how our zones need to change or not need to change based on what's out there today. Um, the back-to-back -back, uh, towns, that's that's one example of what of how things are changing. And like Dave Aston said, you know, it's a way for developers to find efficiencies. Um, to lower the price of houses, make them basically smaller. Um, but, you know, there's, there's lots to consider. Many. Yeah. Can I give you one suggestion? Because when, when I was doing my little bit of research for tonight's agenda, I saw you can actually have back-to-back -back stacked townhomes, uh, which baffles me, but there we go. Um, is that something we should be putting into our uh, zoning, into our um, proposed changes? I, I, it's definitely something that we should be looking at, I think. Um, there are some really great examples of back-to-back -back stacked townhouses um, on the east, south, south side of Kitchener and that whole area of Kitchener that's being developed now, it's all in the Greenfield area. Um, the nice thing about it is it really helps you with achieving your density targets for the growth plan. Um, and, and that is something that we'll need to look at in the future. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Okay, uh, seeing no other questions, we'll get back to back to Councillor Chambers. He made a motion to Councillor Chambers. Refresh my memory. I uh, looking at the recommendation on the uh, agenda that says that staff report be received as information that staff be directed to initiate a zoning bylaw amendment to comprehensive zoning bylaw for general housekeeping purposes being filed, etc., as outlined in staff report. Okay. And we'll get Mayor David Bailey to second that. And uh, I think, Ray, you're looking for, as far as the timeline goes, I, I don't see any issues with it. I, is anybody from the committee seeing any issues with the timeline? Okay, so get her done. So, so all in opposed. Okay, seeing none, that's carried. Um, that brings us to the end, I believe. I'm just going to go up to my agenda. Hold on a second. Uh, so we're going to go in camera. I'm not going to take a break simply because uh, it's uh, very short. Uh, no staff reports, I guess, tonight, right, Adam? Am I correct? Nothing? Um, communications, other business, nobody had anything in camera. So can I get a motion then to go in camera? Moved by Mayor Bailey, second by oh. Councillor Pierce. Sorry? Mr. Chair, there's no, there's no items in camera. Oh, I thought we had to receive that item in no. camera. What oh, the, so, the in camera minutes? Yeah. So they're approved with the with the minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. My apologies then. So okay, so the next meeting then is uh March second. Um can I get a motion to adjourn? Okay, Councillor House, we are adjourned and uh we'll see you next week. Councillor Bell, were you gonna are you just motioning to adjourn? <laughs>